Excellent. Let's get that done. What now? Come on. Hey, good morning, Brucey. How are you, bud? Let me just get the microphone in. G'day, Brucey. Technician 90, how are you, buddy? Hey, kid, Red, how are you, bud? What's going on? Good to see you. You safe over there on the east coast or what? Yeah, great. Really good, Brucey. Um, had some big things coming up. So, uh, yeah, always going good, mate. Let me just check that this is all working. Take the bit of that. Oh, sorry, sorry. Hey, Hank. <laughs> well, I mean, technician, that's what it's about, you know, continually improving your equipment to um, provide good content, so, you know. Us, mate, us. It's not about me, technician. Okay? It's about us. We're all in this together, you know, and that's the big difference, mate. I have an us mentality on this stream and community. I don't have a me mentality, you know? And that's why, you know, I left the old platform, so. Right, just excuse me for a second. I've got to get a little bit of the bug spray as uh, when you've got a head my size, like this, and I've just shaved it, I'm their number one target. They just look at me and think, hmm, McDonald's, you know? All right, a little bit of air guard, never hurt anyone. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, really, kid vent? Okay. Yeah, technician, I think in Bunnings at the moment, they're going for about $39 a pair. So I might have got my price wrong. Uh, in terms of running time, it depends on the generator. One thing I did figure out, though, I ran one power board to, like, one cord to three lights, plug the lights individually into the generator, and it'll spread the load evenly. But uh, they worked really well. Hey, Creative Soups, how are you, mate? Good to see you, bud. Welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Hello, Baby Blue. Hey, Brett, how you going, mate? Did that um, uh, knot tying help? I've brought some more Andy down in 80 pounds, so it's easy to see, and I was going to show you some more knots today. Good to see that you're in here, mate. Now, famo, uh, what's happened is, um, on behalf of our community, we've uh, adopted a turtle. Hey, Cal Gibbs, how are you, mate? So what I've done is I've donated $50 to the uh, Dolphin Discovery Centre and we have contributed to the... Uh, um, hey, Timmy Kent, the legend himself. Uh, we've contributed $50 to the Dolphin Discovery Centre Turtle Program. On top of that, I've managed to organise some corporate sponsors for the Discovery Centre. Yeah, it does, technician. And if it if it's not quite charged yet, it, it beeps as well. So um, what we're doing today is the river's finally cleared up. I can actually uh, I can actually see the bottom, right? And we've probably got, I would say, effectively 
I'd say about 15 feet of vision from the edge, fam. And when I got here, there was a heap of activity in the middle of the river here, and there still is, right? I think there's a little bull shark swimming around, okay? Or it's a big brim, because the birds started going crazy. And normally when you come here, you've got about anywhere from three to 10 birds like swimming on the river and that sort of stuff. There's not one in there. They're all up in the trees. They're all looking down at the water and they're all going off their heads before. So now that it calmed down, it was a little bit better. So hopefully today with the break in the season and the fact that this has cleared up, okay, and there's less silt around, we should hopefully um, have a result today. Um, I've still got a bee in my bonnet about that fish that we lost in this snag here. Remember that still, when, that's a problem. When you lose a fish, you don't know what it is. So we're back. Hello, mate. Now, I reckon I could tame that 28. If I had fruit with me and I held fruit here long enough and I was still enough, that little bugger would land on my um, like arm and eat the fruit because they're one of the few native birds that you can um, tame quite easily, you know. And how have you been, James? Are you well? Are you safe in this lockdown and everything, mate? Hey, Quickie, what's going on, bud? How are you, mate? Good to see everyone in here. Thanks for coming in. What we'll do is let me just set up the rigs and then I'll show everyone some really easy knots that'll help you out. One thing um, <laughs> I've learned as I'm getting older is uh, the eyesight's going. Um, <laughs> The hand-eye coordination is going, nah, it's not that bad. But, um, Quickie, thanks for coming in, mate. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to show you some really good knots. I'll show you the three knots that I use, right, in all aspects of fishing. And then what I'm going to do is, I've been withholding, uh, I've been withholding some of the streams. What's happened is, with the YouTube algorithm in comparison to the twitch algorithm the secret to the youtube algorithm is to upload every day that's right technician <laughs> it's like a vape i saw vape on or when i went back in vapes actually all right vapes vape you know at least you know what you're going to get and I said, oh, does Kiwi Rob snore? He goes, yeah, terribly. I said, well, just give him a kiss good night and you'll have a good night's sleep and he'll sit up all night looking at you, you know? So, um... <laughs> You're working from home on the coronavirus helpline, wow. And look, mate, mental health is going to become a massive issue with corona, right? If there's ever a time that that is required, it's now because people are struggling, you know? And, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing at bread. I'm not laughing at Corona. We did a five day regional lockdown, right? From Monday to Friday. And I thought to myself on the first day, I thought, how the hell are people doing this for months on end? You have such a massive disruption to your, to your lifestyle. You know, I just, oh, I, and I think too, a lot of people haven't recovered fitness wise from that original Corona and lockdown, me especially. I'm the worst condition of my life and it's really hard for me to get back into it because you're so paranoid, you know? And um, yeah, so the sad thing is um, things are getting pretty heated over east, which is a real shame. And um, yeah, I, it's just getting restless, Brett. Okay. Well, I suggest you get a giant size, like, mouse wheel, right? Big one. And both of you just take turns to work a bit of steam off, mate, you know? Just sit there as it starts going. And you get other benefits. Uh, you can air condition your house at the same time, right? You know, just sit there all day. Keep it doing. You'll try and power the house from it, mate. You'll get fit and you'll save money. Win-win, you know? So... Somehow I don't think that idea would get off the ground. It's a little bit like that idea I had abattoir tours for vegans. Yeah, it never really worked. Don't know why, thought it was a great idea. Something a bit out of left field, you know? Oh, mate. Don't worry about it, Brett, it's all paid for, mate. That's the main thing. 
All right, let me just get this bait out. Oh. While we're here today, fam, I may well clean out my tackle box, which is gonna be a mission in itself. That'll be another three weeks of my life gone. Rightio. Today's the day, fam. Today's today. Today's the day we hit the jackpot. That's a very nervous duck. Ah. Oh. Isn't it nice to have a stream without all the fanfare? Do you know what I mean? Like sound alerts and, oh man, all that sort of stuff, you know? So. No, I can't do that there. Let's leave that there. Oh, James, that's what it's about, mate. You know, we're interacting with our environment here. We're respecting our environment and just appreciating what we have, you know. We don't realise how lucky we are in Australia. Um, some of this, well, a lot of the stuff that we take for granted, you know, like open spaces and that sort of thing. Uh, in Europe and America, it's a, it's a luxury, you know, with some of the heavily populated areas. I'm just going to defrost this muley. Okay, nice work. So what we'll do is we'll give this a minute. Okay. Yeah, that's right, Brett. We have a huge variety of uh, native birds in Australia, as you can hear with all the chirping. And it's quite nice, you know, it's just a natural backdrop, natural ambience. So, I mean, if I stopped talking, you could turn it into an ASMR stream, you know. <sighs> Right, let's see what was making all that splashing. The other thing we're doing too, people, is our streams are a part of dolphin research. So what I've got to do now is, I'll explain in a second, let me just get this out here. Yeah, it's all right, mate, I'm not trying to catch you. That was bird talk for, do you mind? <sighs> right, so what I've done is I don't have a straight line at that bait. The, um, the line is just dipping down in front of this snag here, okay? If that straightens, you know that there's a fish or something on there, okay? Right, where's their other bait? Yes, yeah, so what we've done with the streams, fam, is we've become a part of the uh, Snubnose Dolphin Research down here. So, whereas I've been seeing the dolphins coming up this far up the river for a couple of years now on the streams, and they have done since I was young, um, the researchers weren't aware of it. So, the next time we see it happen, we're going to be making a phone call, and the people are going to come down with their drones to get footage and take records, you know, uh, time of day, tide, temperature, water temperature, all that sort of stuff. Nice. Lovely. We're at the change of a tide here, fam. Right. Now I'm gonna set this drag to max. Right, so if anything hits it, it's going to hook up straight away. There was a bump in that line, famo. Hang on. Why 
We have four days of rain starting tomorrow into next week. Then after that, I'm quite confident that the uh, season is broken. I've got to go and get my um, car sorted Tuesday and then we're away. Oh, it is Tim. It's great. Daz, 72. Dan, how are you, bud? Timmy, how you going, mate? Timmy, I'll be in to see you Tuesday, bud. All right, I'm taking the car in Tuesday and I'll be coming in after that. So bring that gear to work with you on Tuesday, bud. All right, now let me show you a few knots that'll help you with your fishing, Famo. What we'll do is we'll just zoom in a bit. Sorry, Timmy, that's the Streamlab spot, bud. Let's just go here. What we'll do is take that there. Sorry, man. Okay, Famo, so look, I'm gonna show you a knot that I use for quite a few different applications in the fishing. Okay, this is known as a Centaur knot. Dick Lewis introduced this knot at the 1974 boat show in Brisbane. Okay, it is the easiest knot that you'll use in the world. It's one of the few knots that you can use to um, join lines together. You can use it on swivels, you can use it on um, hooks, and you can also use it uh, when you've got two different um, sized lines. So if you've got like a, an 80 pound line and you've got a 50 pound line, this is one of the few knots that you can do uh, instantly, right? That allow you to keep fishing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna join two pieces of 80 pound together and I'm gonna show you how to do it, right? Okay. So. The knot is called a centaur knot, right? So that's our first piece of line, and this is the easiest knot to do in the world. Let me get a hook. I'll do it on a hook first, and I'll show you how to join. Hang on, I just heard a little bit of a rattle there, fam. So many birds around today. It's a couple of 28s there. Let me just grab this hook for you. Oh, actually, yeah, we'll grab a hook first. Dun -dun -dun. As I go to the briefcase. Okay, so. What I've got here is a size 10 tuna circle, right, just there. So let me show you how to join. Uh, with this knot, you can use it on turned up, turned down eyes or straight um, eyes that run along the shank. So this is what we do. You put the tag end through there, okay, so check that out. And then what you do is this. Now remember when you're tying knots, always hold your hook or your swivel in your non... Hi Jai, no not yet mate, we've just cast in buddy. So, what we do is we hold that in our non-preferred hand, okay? Now what you do, remember, you've got the top and the bottom of your line you've got the left hand side and the right hand side, however you want to do it. So we go over, left, under, right, and form one loop. Okay, like that, see? See that there? Then we just go under, left, and over, right again. And what we do, we put the um, loops next to each other. Don't try and cross over. So each subsequent loop, just make it a little bit smaller than the one beforehand, right? So that it doesn't like fold over again. And then what you do, do a third loop again. So what we've got is we've got all the loops layered on top of each other, right? Then what you do 
is you bring your tag in through here. See how we've got that fairly even, right? And you just form the knot gently. Now see how these are all binding around each other, like so. There we go. The good thing about this knot is it's nearly 100% breaking strain, right? But it's one of the simplest knots you'll ever see. And in terms of um, in terms of strength, right? This is 80 pound line, remember? So in terms of 80 line strength, this is 80 pound line. See, I'm getting back to that, and that's holding fine. Right. And this is the tension in the line. Ready? Sounds like I'm on the old, uh, you know, rocking chair on the uh, back patio in the south playing the banjo. Not very well though. Okay, so. And what it does is, yeah, and what it does is it just forms a very small, very compact knot. Alrighty, and the reason why I like using this knot is, <laughs> yeah, Timmy, before they filmed Deliverance, they went to Manjum up and rehearsed. You know what I mean? Headed out to Quinnan up, you know? So, <laughs> um, <laughs> Now, <laughs> easy, easy, there could be someone watching, okay, we have to go back there one day. So, <laughs> the other good thing about this knot too, okay, is after it's formed, um, you can sometimes um, take it off again, but as you can see, the knot's really good. And it's one of the few knots that when you tie it properly, the line comes out parallel to the um, actual, like the main line that you've got there, see? Right, I'll bring that across and show you. All right, it's a beautiful compact knot. Now the good thing about this knot is you can tie it at night, like I said. So if it's night and it's dark and you've got a slight silhouette, you can just put that through and you can like uh, you know work your way around in the dark so you just go once twice three times check that everything's okay and you don't have to turn lights on you don't have to move and you don't have to scare fish all right when it comes to joining lines right when it comes to joining lines what I'll do let me just um I'm going to try something that a guy that does a lot of filming told me. All right, let's bring that back there. He said, rather than zoom in, he said to me, step in. So we'll try that, okay? Now, this is interesting, famo. When I cast that out, right... My line was there. Now it's here. So this one is still here though. So I don't know what's going on there. I don't know where anything's moved it or whatever, but I'm hoping we get some action on that, okay? Now, oh, uh, and technician, we're, we're able to grow our gardens mainly all year round, but um, with a greenhouse, but I mean, now is the growing season. All right, so, Brookstar. <laughs> it's not like you, Brook. Normally you only turn up when there's 500 people in the chat. How are you, mate? People, the streamer formerly known as Brook Martson. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to join line with the centaur knot. Or it's just a double centaur knot. So, same old story, okay. So what we do, cross our lines over once, twice, three times. Never rush with your lines, fam. Just always take your time. 
and form your knots properly. See? See how I'm still making sure they form properly? The best thing about this knot is at no stage, right, does the knot bed in on itself like other knots. Okay, so once, twice, three times. Timmy reaches for his Lionel Richie album. Now, watch this. So what I've done is I've done two centaur knots there. Watch how they bed in, fam. Check that out. See how they've twisted? Okay, there. And what we've got is we've got a beautifully formed loop there. Like that. The knots are nice and even. Okay. And what you've got is a beautiful join there. See how small and compact it is? If you're using 80 pound tackle, right, that will go through your guides without much problem at all. Okay, see that? That's the way, Brooke. There you go. And um, that will be that's like the hundred percent knot strength there. <laughs> Wattle birds, noisy buggers they are. Now the other thing is too, a lot of people have asked about uni knots. I don't like uni knots. Um, uni knots are one of the few knots that have sort of let me down. Right? I'll show you how to tie a uni knot though. For those of you that don't know, in America or unit unit. Or Europe it might be a different knot name so what you do in through the eye and around what you do is you form a loop in here right so you just form another loop there along the line okay one two three four five six like that yeah centaur yeah it's been around for oh nearly 50 years now, this is why I don't like the uni knot fam, okay? So, see the uni knot, how the tag end comes out of the back of the knot there? I mean, lovely knot and everything. See that there? Lovely knot out the back of the hook and all that sort of stuff, but if you have a really good look at it, see how the tag end comes out the back of the knot? Right? On bigger fish, I have had it fail on me. Not so much for the knot itself, but uh, with sharks and that sort of stuff with their abrasive skin, right? Um, I have had, I've lost a um, gummy shark right at the boat. Me personally, I like the improved clinch knot as it's called, right? Oh, Brett, I've caught some very big fish with that knot. Um, I have not used it with braid, right? Um, as I don't think it's designed to be used for braid and with braid I'll show you an easy way to well it does Tim and watch this this is just the old improved clinch knot one two three four five six okay in through there back through there like so now this is why I like using this knot See how the tag end, right, is at the front of the knot? Check that out. See how the tag end's at the front of the knot there? Look. See? So what that means is rather than pull on the knot and cause it to tighten, the harder you pull on that, right, the more the knot tightens in on itself. So what it does... Right, like that. Ooh. Okay, and that's like a guitar string. Omar, Opar, 
to get me some chitlets, you know, and all that sort of stuff. Brooke can relate to that. That's how he grew up. I just took him back to his youth. Right, so uh, that is a very strong knot fam. I mean, I'm a big bloke. I'm not a lightweight, unfortunately. <laughs> Those days are gone. Right, so as you can see, and you can tell, you can tell that the knot's been tied properly, right? You, <laughs> you can tell that the knot's been tied properly because the tag end is perpendicular to the knot, see? Right? So that, and it's like a little uh, termite mound there, you know? So there we go. Now on top of that, okay, <laughs> you've always been a tenor, Brook. And you've been a tenor in another way, Brook, because the last time you uh, got into a fight, they got changed, remember? <laughs> anyway, so there is another knot that you can use too called a Snell knot, not smell, S-M, S-N, okay? So with the Snell knot, the Snell knot you can only use on turned up. Hey, Christopher, how are you, my friend? Welcome. So with the... Um, With the um, Snell knot, right, you can only use it on turned up or turned down eyes. Don't use it on hooks with straight eyes because it'll cause an area uh, of fatigue, okay? Right, so what you want to do is the only time when you've got like a straight eye on a hook, that's parallel, like the same as the shank, right? So, and Snell knots are the best knots to use. Yeah, great, Christopher. A bit quiet on the old fishing, mate, but um, we've got another four days of rain. The river's cleared up, and I'm up here doing a bit of uh, research for the dolphins with the community as well. We're going to take notes of the time of day that the dolphins swim past, if they swim past, all right? So I'll just grab another couple of hooks, and I'll show you what I mean, fam. So, this is a live bait hook. See how that has a straight eye on the shank? Right? In comparison to the bottom hook, look at that. Okay? So see how the top one has a straight eye, the bottom one has a turned down eye? If you're going to do a Snell knot on a hook, right, because you go in through the eye of the hook and then you wrap it around, I don't have to do the knot on this, but see on there, see how we're going to have a fatigue point there? Because when the fish takes the bait and hits the hook, what it's going to do is see through there when it comes up like that, see how it's going to have a fatigue point and that'll rub and cause friction and all that sort of stuff. So what you do is, uh, let me show you how to join, um, let me show you how to join three hooks together to make a really big strip bait using the Snell knot and that little centaur knot that I showed you. Some fish are very, very finicky. So in Australia, we use what's known as gang hooks, okay? And no, uh, it's not where a bunch of like, hooks hang out in an area and they sort of beat you up every time you walk past. Right. Oh shit.
see that guy going past on the boat at the very front of the boat? Absolute worst part of the boat to be on, fam. If they hit a log or something in the water, he's just gonna straighten the water. Never ever do that, okay? Better to hit the side of the boat and stay in the boat than fall out of the boat. All right, now, now that they've gone past and stirred the river up, we should hopefully get a fish. All right, and uh, in the waterways where you fish, shipping channels and that sort of stuff, always look at the roster of the ships when they move. When they move out from their mooring and head back out to the sea with their um, sea containers and that, fish will always go into where the um, ships have come out and feed on what they've stirred up on the bottom, you know? Oh, that's right, uh, that's right, James. But the thing is, I think the bloke that was on the front of that um, boat was older than me, even though he had more hair than me, which is not hard. As newborns have more hair than me, mate, you know? Oh, it is, James, absolute, absolute no-brainer. Okay, absolute no-brainer, buddy. Right, so, let me just put another one out. And the other thing is too, people, if you see people coming out and they're past in the boat where you're fishing, wind your lines in straight away, because the last thing you need is to get your line caught around the prop. Not only, not only will you end up in an argument and a fight, right, you'll have to pay for the repairs on their prop, because you're the one that's got the line in the water. Right, so we're gonna give this about 30 seconds to a minute to defrost, and then we're gonna cast out again and hope that they don't come back, okay? Now, let me show you how to join the hooks. So, in Western Australia and most parts of Australia, what they have, okay, is we will join double seven, double six D tarpon hooks together to form a chain or a link of hooks, right? And I'll show you how we do that. Let me just get this bait out now that it's defrosted. That's a great cast. That is a great cast, fam. I think I've got my casting mojo back, you know? Right. That is actually spot on. That's where we got that um, fish that took the whole muley last time. So because the water's heading this way, I've cast straight out here and there's a bow in the line so it's gonna all head downstream, okay? That's good, that's settled, everything's good, that's the deep part of the river, awesome. Right. <laughs> Vin, how are you, mate? Welcome to the stream. <laughs> all right, so, when we gang hooks, right, what we do is we open up the eyes with the front two or three millimetres of these uh, crimping pliers, okay? Will, how are you, bud? And what you do is you slide the hook into there and then what you do, now you've got to remember this is Australia and Western Australia. In your local area with your local fisheries, always check your local guidelines before you do anything like this. 
so you don't violate your local fishing laws, okay? Now it's just a question of time and waiting for a fish to come up. Hope you're having a good day, Will. And Vin, how are you, buddy? Are you safe in this lockdown, mate? Or What I like to do with these um, hooks, too, is I like to uh, put a little swivel on the end just so it takes all the twist out of it. Right. So whenever I've got these uh, on my rigs and that sort of stuff, on my rigs and that sort of stuff, I'll always put a little swivel on the end. What it does is that just gives you one more point that'll remove line twist, okay? So what we do in Western Australia, these are called gangs. Yeah, I'm always doing well, Vin. So see how we have the swivel on the end and we have the four hooks. Now these are 40 tarpons or 40 double seven double six Ds. That's the double seven double six Dur Duratons, okay? Right. And we fish these for Australian salmon and a variety of other species. Okay, but fish like Mulloway, which are quite um, timid, okay, and you do have um, uh, issues with um, too much metal when you're putting baits out. Now, a lot of the old timers, what they'll do is they'll paint their whites, their, their hooks uh, a, uh, a colour, either red or white or whatever, okay? Because apparently when metal goes into salt water, it gives off a little electromagnetic field. If you paint the hook, it doesn't, okay? And red apparently disappears underwater. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the monofilament version of this, okay? Vin, was your old username Vin Boston? Oh, really? Okay. So, I'm going to show you the mono version of this. So, first thing we're going to do, we're going to do what's known as a snell. Right, I've got to leave enough line to join more hooks. So, what you do is, you put line down this end of the hook, do a loop and bring it up on the other side. See that there, fam? Okay. And then what we do is you clamp that and just bring the tag end just past the bend of the hook. You've just got to bring it to here. Even, you know, quarter of an inch past that bend. If you do it beforehand, what'll happen is you'll get it wrapped up in the knot. So this is really easy. Oh, I didn't leave anyone, mate. One, two, three, four five, six, seven around the hook. Now, the important thing is, okay, see how we've got the two tag ends on top of the hook shank? What you've got to do is, if the eye of the hook was turned down, you'd turn that over like that, so this went through the eye. So what you do is you pull that on there. Now see that, see how there's no friction point there? Right? Yeah, you're right, Vin. I know, mate. And then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do another hook. Do not, here it is. So we're gonna do another hook now. What you've gotta do, the secret to these, right, is you've gotta try and get these hooks as close together as possible. So I'm gonna bring that right in here. See how I've got that nearly at the eye of the other hook there, but, when I do the knot, it obviously is going to move away from that hook. So we'll go in, so we're going down this left hand side and then under the right hand side and coming over. So once again, you know, the tag ends here, right? Once, twice, three times, four times, five, six, one for the fishing rod, right? And what'll happen is, now that's beautiful. See the spacings on that, 
right? That's really good. So what we've got is we've virtually got the eye of the hook, hold, uh, you know, up against the, uh, the shank of the other one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put a little heavy duty hook on the end and we're going to use that centaur knot that I showed you, right? So bring that right down here, putting the point of the hook away from you, like so. Right, once. Don't start singing it, Timmy. Resist the urge, mate. Timmy will get all emotional, get his LP out, you know. Start singing Lionel Richie at the top of his voice after six Coronas. Oh, it's a vicious cycle, Tim. Right, bring that around again. Okay, like so. Bring that in here. And what you've got is you've got three hooks really closely together, right? And when you're chasing those really big fish, like big king mackerel in America or big narrow barred Spanish mackerel, like we say in Australia, right? Wahoo and all that. <laughs> Jacko! Mate, you need to get onto Australian Idol. They're missing out, right? Thanks, Christopher. So what we have now, okay, see that? Now the other thing is too, notice how I've positioned the points of the hook to oppose one another. Right, so see how I've done it. We've got one point here, we've got the other point there, and then the other point on the end. So with that there, you could even um, have it so that um, you've got the point of the circle hooks on either side of the bait. And if you're baiting a um, bait fish with the head backwards and that sort of stuff, you can put that through the head. So that would go through the um, head of the bait fish. Then you've got these going either side of the body of the fish. So what you've got is you've got three strike points on your bait in all different parts of it. So it doesn't matter where the fish hits, right? It'll hook up, right? So if you've got these all on the same side, right? Like that and then the fish hits the bait on the side where you don't have the points of the hook, you'll miss the um, strike every time. And that's important when you're fishing tidal waters, because if you've got a bait floating downstream parallel under a float or on a rig or whatever, and a fish comes up from the upstream side and hits it and just goes chomp like that, if you've got the bends of the hook there, it's not gonna hook up. Do you know what I mean? But if you've got, you know, <laughs> oh, I can still remember hello. Remember, you know, like the... Oh, no, don't. I was just starting to sleep again. Oh, Lionel. Oh, you know. And he's doing the, um, the clay figurine and everything because it's in the script. Right. So if I've got the points of the hooks on all... Uh, on both sides of the baits, it doesn't matter whether the fish hits it upstream, downstream, underneath, on top, side on, whatever, it'll hook up somewhere, okay? And um, that's basically how we do it, all right? I'm gonna save this one that I've done here. You very rarely get one right live on stream, fam, you know what I mean? So, and all the um, hooks are really close together. All righty, so that works out really well. Very, very happy with that, famo. Very happy with that. I'm going to put that in this little container right here. This is going to be my little rig container. Um, Vinny, not really, mate. Um, I like to catch most of my bait. And um, what we do here is we'll keep our baits frozen until we need to use them. And then we'll just let them defrost. We'll cast them out... Um, you know, frozen and let them defrost in the water. Okay. Uh, no. They are... These are 4 O's. Right, these are 4 O's. They're 4 O um, tarpons. They're 4 O tarpons, right. These are... These are 12 O circle hooks and they're 10 O live bait hooks, fam. So these are huge hooks. All right, and yeah, that's a really good way to um, present, especially strip baits. 
you get yourself a really slimy Benito, you know, something that's got a lot of oil and a lot of blood in it, okay, and you use that, um, you're welcome, Christopher, and you use those three hooks, and usually when you do your um, strip baits, do them longitudinally, fam. Don't go across the grain of the um, fish. Usually most fish, their muscle fibres run from the head to the tail, right? If you cut across that, like in a cutlet, it won't hold that well. But if you cut a nice long strip, go down the backbone, cut down the side, and wrap the, um, or put the hooks through that with a half hitch on the end, you've got a beautiful bait that'll present lovely in the water, and you've got maximum chance of hooking up a fish, you know? Because it doesn't matter how big the fish is or the bait are, if you don't have um, your hooks on all different sides, you can still miss a strike, you know? Some fish will hit a bait, and then they'll swim with it and then turn and hit it, so those fish that have those, like, large mouths, and most fish mouths are very hard, because it's uh, mainly, um, you know, bone. There's no flesh in a lot of fish mouths like humans, you know? Is that charging or not? Let's have a look, fam. Just excuse me for a second. A little bit of technical support here. What happened there? No, that's not charging. Bummer. Battery 5%. We're going to lose the stream if I'm not careful. Uh, where's that one? Right, Ski, I think what it's doing is it's charging the power pack. I need to change that, fam. So just hang on a second. Let me just sort this out. I've got the right, whoops, I've got the right fitting now. Let's take that out of there. Right, excuse me for a second, famo. Oh, dear. Hey, now we're talking. That's better. Right, so we've got a... Uh, uh, more battery setting. Excuse me for a second. Yep. Oh, that's better, fam. Sorry about that. A little bit of a technical issue that we sorted, with the uh, main technical issue being me. Right. Huh? Frank the Tank, how are you, bud? The what word? The the what? Uh. Excellent, that's charging now, wonderful. Glad we checked on that, Famo, because it would have gone off. Like a bucket of prawns in the sun. No, 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 I chose to leave, mate. So um, that was my choice. Just uh, didn't like the direction that the platform was heading in. And after sitting back and sort of realising like who was on the platform, um, yeah, I didn't want to be associated with quite a lot of things on there, Famo. And that's my choice as a content creator. So hence the move to YouTube. And um, there's a lot of things that you don't know about 
Twitch and the platform, right? So when the um, oh, you're welcome, Frank. And um, yeah, I just over it, mate. So I just find it uh, very frustrating when you're a partnered streamer on a platform because irrespective of whether you do the right thing or not, if you partnered, you're one of them. So that's it, no more. And uh, I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to give something back to the community, mate, more than what I was doing on where we were. So I'm happier streaming to 11 people here or however many we have in the stream than what I was doing before, okay? And for um, the content that we do, right, I think it's better suited to this platform by a long shot. Oh, okay. Interesting. Right, so while we're here, I think I might clean out the old tackle box, which is probably going to take a month of my life. But that's good. Oh, male breast milk. How are you, buddy? Yeah, I, th I think I vaguely recollect that. I think I vaguely recollect that, mate. And thanks very much for your help on the green screen that time, Frank. It, uh, yeah, helped out a bit, you know? So... <laughs> Oh, you're welcome, Vin. And look, tell everyone about the stream, fam. We are starting out again. The good thing about uh, YouTube is it's another challenge, isn't it? You know, the other thing is too, I don't know whether you can notice the difference. Have you noticed how much clearer... Um, have you noticed how much clearer the screen is on... Um, yes, Loey, I lost a bet. <laughs> right, um... Have you noticed how much clearer the stream is on YouTube? I personally think the sound's even better. And notice how the picture is so much better. It's just all win-win, fam. You know, we have nowhere nearly as many interruptions. And I think we're one of the few... Um... Oh, it is, Frank. You know, I mean, look at the richness in the colours of the blues and the reds and all that sort of stuff. I need to lose some weight, mate. I'm starting to look like a giant tablecloth, you know. So, um, yeah. And once again, fam, a huge shout out to our channel sponsors, Millard Marine, Qualia Reels and Rode Microphones. Rode Microphones, if you're a streamer out there or you're an aspiring streamer, you want to get serious about your content, get serious about your audio, and get Rode microphones, fam. They make all the difference. Okay, and I mean, Rode are pretty good with their sponsorships. Um, with their sponsorship, there's never any contracts or anything like that. You know, the person that I dealt with at Rode was really professional. And um, a big thank you to Sackham for um, suggesting a donation goal. I went, no, we'll get sponsored. So Rode gave us about, I think it was equivalent to about $1,500 worth of microphones for the stream in the community and uh, we've got them as a preferred channel or a recommended channel on our YouTube stream and um, yeah as soon as we improved the audio the quality of the streams went up unbelievably you know so um, it's all good yeah and don't get wrapped up in um... <sighs> thanks Vin <laughs> thanks Loey Oh, yeah, I know, Vin, but the thing is, too, mate, um, yeah, I'm so glad I left when I did, you know? And, um, yeah, just... Phew. Let's not go there. January 23rd... Um, January 23rd, we give our partnership back. It may be sooner, the way I'm going, because... Uh, that's how it works, you know? So does anybody have any questions on the knots that I've showed you today? Uh, is there anything 
that you would like to ask or any knots that you haven't seen for next stream remember we're always um, we're always welcome to new ideas and new suggestions okay Frank what I'm doing is I'm fishing for Western Australian black brim and River Mulloway but we're still in our winter weather pattern the weather has clear I mean the winter the winter has nearly finished we've got another week of uh, sort of lightish to mid strength right hang on hang on no, that's moving hang on right so um what we'll be doing as in schools of fish the only schools of fish that we normally get through here vin okay yeah that's right the only schools of fish that we get through here mate are usually bluefish or our tailor when they're in the river they're not blue they've got a green tinge okay and um, that's about it the mulloway in the river are more of a solitary species and with the brim the larger ones are more solitary and if you do catch some smaller ones usually they're in schools you know so yeah always on the tide change frank now unfortunately with this time of day it's a lowish tide the best time to fish in rivers or even in the salt not so much fresh water um, the best time to fish is three hours before high tide three hours after high tide okay tipsy max how are you bud welcome mate oh. good to see so many familiar faces in here thank you very very much really frank low tide okay we always got taught to fish it on high tide that's a new one yeah oh i don't know mate oh. yeah heaps jacko do you, is there any particular reel you'd like to see do you oh, would, would anybody be interested in live reel maintenance to show you how to take a reel part apart effectively and then put it back together without like having to um, use the book and that sort of stuff because I can do that if you want I've taken apart um, quite a few reels live on stream and put them back but if anybody would like to see say an overhead or a thread line reel or anything like that it'd be my pleasure fam I'd be happy to show you okay same odds okay James well I'll get one organized we'll organize a real maintenance stream for um, I guess probably Monday or Monday yeah we'll, we'll look for one for Monday okay all right Jacko no dramas I will get onto it mate and what I'll do everyone can you please go to Twitter right um, I should probably put that in my description shouldn't I that would require maturity and forward thinking right can you please follow on twitter if you haven't followed already and um that way what i'll do is i'll start notifying everyone when i'm going to go live and then what i'll do is i'll do the topic of the stream and look people um we've got a push to get uh partnered on twitter at the moment okay does anybody use these we call these glitter birds and they have a sonic rattle in them fantastic for fishing on the sunny days to attract fish yeah that's right Vin but that's here mate I don't know what it, I, I suppose it's the same everywhere what happens is Vin um, to fish effectively you need to have water movement you know and then the tide of the the tide change usually everything stops for a little while and a lot of fish will fe feed on the tide change but i don't know how it is oh <laughs> yeah so just say you've got a high tide at five o'clock in the afternoon have lunch get ready get down there about one o'clock set up pick your spot and all that by about 1 fish till about seven o'clock or eight o'clock or just after dark come home beautiful right this 
is the most important thing. Oh, how'd you go, Brucey? Have you caught many fish on it, buddy? Man, that's the best. I don't know whether you um, do this too. What I'll do is I'll leave sinkers out to dull, okay? Um, I find it's better when you don't use super shiny, super new sinkers, you know? Not that I'm really catching much at the moment anyway, but... Oh, you're welcome, Vin. Anytime, mate. I'm more than happy to ask, answer questions that anybody throws at us, Vin. Okay? Um, you know how our stream works. We've always been more than happy. I mean, there's a few people out there that say they they base their fishing streams on education, but they don't. Okay? They just say that so they can, uh, you know, get people in to watch them, you know what I mean? We actually base our fishing streams on education. Alrighty? Jeepers, that's had a hard life. What the hell happened there? Someone tried a party trick when they were drunk one night. Nice one, James. Did you get yourself an electric outboard with your fishing kayak? Because they're handy. If you're fatigued and you're in a situation where you've got a shark that's come up and paying you a bit of attention, mate, having a bit of, like, turbo behind you makes you feel a lot safer, you know? One day we went out here about five kilometres off the coast in the kayak. That was good fun. If a Noah had have come up, though... <laughs> See you later! Oh, nice one, James. Congratulations. And the awesome thing about that is, mate, it's a great way to keep fit, bud. You know, I've got to start getting back into the kayak myself too. <laughs> if I can fit in it. Oh. 35 pound thrust. Excellent, James. You know what the funny thing is, mate? You know the only difference between like a freshwater and a saltwater Minn Kota? It's usually a stainless steel nut and bolt holding the leg onto the mount, you know what I mean? That's about it. Go through. <laughs> oh, mate. Yeah, I mean, COVID, man. COVID is just, wow. And the other thing that's a bit annoying with COVID is um, all the prices have gone up for everything from freight, you know what I mean? Uh, Europe's on its knees, fam. They can't get people to... Um, you know, they can't, yeah, a bit of a Caltex all-rounder. They can't get, um, they can't get workers, they can't get anything, fam, you know. I was going to do um, beach streams last week, fam, but unfortunately, oh, that's right, James, but unfortunately the winter weather patterns, the beach hasn't reclaimed yet which means the water's right up to the dunes. We don't have any beach to work with or drive on, which is a bit of a concern. Okay. We will be heading down and doing some estuary fishing soon, famo. I'm uh, very, very fond of the old estuary fishing. So we will be heading down south soon. And we will be spending a couple of days at various venues, taking the Jenny, you know what I mean? Oh, me too, James. It's just that uh, we gave the boat back in June as per our agreement, right? But unfortunately, due to COVID and that sort of stuff, um, due to COVID and that sort of stuff, you know, supply is a real issue, mate. So... Supply is a real issue. They can't keep up with demand, you know. So, fair is fair.
And apart from that, whatever, what's everyone else been doing? You know, we're all like watching a fishing stream. Well, what about you, crew? Tell me what's going on in your lives. Anything interesting happen? Oh, I've got a question for everyone in chat. What are your three pet hates? How's that for a question? Think hard about that. Oh, that's right, mate. So what are your three pet hates, fam? Doesn't have to be... Oh, we'll be a bit more... Bit more oh, no, 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 we'll just leave. What are your three pet hates? I just got to get some more bug spray. Really, Jacko? Really? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I sympathise. My my pet hate is fake people. I don't like fake people. You know, that's one of the reasons why I left the old platform. <laughs> Just over it, you know. Really, Brucey? That's right, mate. <laughs> Just practice small will. The only difference between an expert and a beginner Bro, even the kookaburras are laughing at me. Um, the only difference between an expert and a beginner, Will, is the experts made their mistakes already, mate. If you're not making mistakes, you're not learning, pal. You know, I've had heaps and heaps of mistakes fishing. I mean, I still make mistakes now, mate. It's part of being human. Oh, they do, Dave. How are you, bud? Ice fishing, mate. Oh, I've never done that. But best of luck there, Dave. Yeah, but Jacko, that's what you have to do, mate. You have to think outside the box. You know what I mean? Because if you don't think outside the box, you're not progressing. Oh, Jacko. There's a right and a wrong way to do everything in life, mate. Right? There's a right and a wrong way to do everything in life, mate. So, you know, if you automatically think... It's like these people go, yeah, I just speak the truth. Well, no, you speak your opinion. Do you know what I mean? So... Like, they've got the final say on everything. It's like, mate, you don't. Just shut up. You know? So... I'm just cleaning out the tackle box, fam. What a mess. You don't realise how much of a mess your gear is, you know. I take my um, fishing line away with me every single time I finish. I never leave uh, anything at the beach. And you've got to put it somewhere, you know. So what I'm doing is while we're chatting, okay, while we're chatting, I'm working through this. So, yeah, that's right, James. So what's been going on on the old platform, fam? What's been happening? Anything interesting? Anything that's caught your eyes? Is there any new, like, groundbreaking content that's coming out that's worth watching? What? That can go as well. Nothing, mate. It's just when I... I always take my rubbish with me. Well, that's exactly right, Dave S. That's... I'd never leave... Just leave your footprints, mate. That's what we say here in Oz.
Oh, the other thing is too, Famo, we have a heap of merch coming. Okay. More bots, yeah, man. The so has any of the has any of the hate started to spread, you know, in the old platform because they introduced all those new tags and that sort of stuff. And as much as they're trying to do the right thing by the general population, people that sort of want to try and target people use them, you know. Hitch, good fella. I remember when Hitch caught up with Simon and Shook in Queensland. He's cycling through Canada, isn't he? Yeah, he's one of the few streamers that I'll still watch. Okay, so... Oh, they lowered the price of subs. That's very, Oh, that's right. I think I read about that. Yeah, I got the email for that just before I left the platform. Oh, away, mosquito. I got the uh, email for that just before I left the platform. Oh, God. Nice one, JP. And retrieve it like a lure, JP. Retrieve it like a lure, mate. Nice and slowly. Nice and slowly, my friend. So cast out, JP, like we do here. Cast out, right, rod tip down along the bottom, retrieve it really slowly using a ball sinker. Okay, then take a step and try and cast in the same spot and retrieve it slowly. That's how I get all my salmon and tailor. They like moving baits. How are you, JP Earthling? I can't give you a shout out, buddy. Are you going to be streaming at JP or what? Thanks for coming in, mate. <laughs> shook, shook, mate. You got to remember, people. Shook has never said that he's a fishing streamer. Shook started out on Twitch rapping, okay, and that's what he does. He just does the content to provide content for his community, you know. And, uh, I mean, Shook's one of the few streamers that actually puts back into the community what he gets out of it, you know, so. I would have thought that we would have hooked something by now, but it is very low tide. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to wait for the tide to change and everything to start coming up river again. You got to remember too, Famo. When you use a, a rig with a sinker between two swivels, and you've got the bait on the end, just before it hits the water, about that high off the water, grab your spool. It'll flick your bait out. Then what'll happen is your sinker will hit the bottom, and your bait will turn into the current. And if the um, water changes, the bait will swim back. It'll move back round in the current as well. It's one of the most natural ways to um, present. Uh, baits in most waterways but the salt water season's upon us I've invested a lot of money in technology fam oh yeah you gotta look after your health JP alright gotta look after your health mate well done just let it sit I still remember when I popped his rib on the lawn. He came out, he was doing all his rap shit, you know, with his hand motions and all that sort of stuff. And he started writing me off and I went, <sighs> shook. And he's sitting there going, yeah, I'll kick your ass, man. You know, I know this. And I went, do you know how to flip someone over in a fight? He goes, yeah. I went, show me. And uh, so I got there on the lawn. He went to flip me over. And I went, that's not how you do it, shook. This is how you do it. And the silly bugger, right, I flipped him and landed on him and I heard, and I went, ooh, can't be good. And I went, do you know how to fight? He goes, no, I just watch YouTube videos. <sighs> Needless to say, I keep rubbing that in. <laughs> so. 
<laughs> he got owned by a pensioner. I mean, look at me. Look at me. And I mean, here, go with your strengths, Jess. Yeah. So. <laughs> All righty. Oh, he is Jacko, and he is an entertainer. Shook is one of the few people that's an entertainer, fam. All right. I just, uh, yeah. Unfortunately for Shook, I just think, you know, he doesn't realise. When you're Shook's popularity, he's always a target for people trying to cling on, right? And because he's fairly good-natured, Shook is no dummy, fam. All right, I know that for a fact. All righty? So I just just get very annoyed with how people use him sometimes in many different ways. We won't go into that, okay? Very frustrating. But I mean, you've got to realise too, he's away from his family, he's in another country. So, you know, he's going through that and I don't think many people could do that. Shook's like the... Uh, Shook's like a... Uh, I guess he's like the American version of Arnold Schwarzenegger in Australia, you know what I mean? Like, look at Arnold. You know, Austria went to America, started lifting iron. Shook, American, went to Australia, started sinking beer, flat out, you know. And I mean, Arnold made it. You know, get to the chopper. You know what I mean? And Shook's... <laughs> uh, and... Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> you know, you try and do that. You go to Austria and try and do that. You know what I mean? Head case. How are you, bud? What's going on? People, if you want to use a really good sinker from the beach, that's a fixed sinker, right? Get one of these. These are breakaway sinkers, right? What'll happen is you lodge them in the um, sand and then when you pull on them hard enough, these disengage and you pull the sinker in. Absolutely fantastic for casting long distances. Okay. All right, so we've managed to tidy the tackle box. Yay me. Excellent. Excellent. There's none. Wow, okay. Oh, JP Earthling, you'll get them on the East Coast. They call them, they named them after that satellite. Yeah, they call them Sputnik sinkers because it looks like a satellite in space. Really, Davis? That's weird. Really? Um, yeah, they call them Sputnik sinkers. Oh, okay, Dave, yes, see, in Western Australia, we don't have many lakes, it's mainly rivers. We don't have big lakes like you guys over there. No, we're near it. We have dams here, but they're, I think you would call them ponds, really, compared to what you have. I mean, those great lakes that you have. Oh, nice one, Dave. Yeah, it's a different world with the fishing on the river, Dave. You've got uh, tide influences. 
you know what I mean? Currants, you've got to take into consideration, like early in the season, when the farmers use their lime and their fertilisers, it washes into the river, which drives fish away. There's so many other factors compared to the lakes and that sort of stuff, you know? I, I envy you lot. Those great lakes in the north of America and the south of Canada, wow. I mean, they have their own sort of like, you know, nearly their own weather systems. They need their own postcodes, you know? All right, so we've tidied the tackle box. Still just as bloody heavy though. That C charger is so much quicker than the USB charger, fam. Unbelievable. <whistles> Same with all fishing, Dave. Um, you know one lure that works? Uh, this isn't a big river, JP. There's another river down south that is... Um, a lot bigger than this and a lot deeper. See the water here, how it's a brown type of clear color? That's not a very deep river. The one down south that we're gonna to go to is jet black, because it's so deep in some spots, you know? If you go up north to the Ord River and that sort of stuff, the tidal influences on them are massive. The further north you go, the bigger the rivers, you know what I mean? And then you have the underground rivers like the Murchison and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it's all good fun, fam, you know? <laughs> Certainly do, Will. We've got the big 30-pound outfit there and the little 20-pound outfit there, mate. So the big bait's over here, right? And the little bait's in here. Now we've got this westerly breeze picking up. Now, interestingly enough, fam... That line's just straightened a bit. So something is having a look at that. Go on, you know you want to. Go on. Promise to put you back if I catch ya. I'm still never gonna live it down with that fish that was here, famo, unless I actually catch it, you know? That's why we're back. I'm not a very good loser. I hate losing. That's why I was so good at individual sports. Oh, have you seen all the um, news about uh, that Dr. Disrespect that's going to be suing the old platform? Apparently it's going to go down really heavy, you know what I mean? So... Alright, just excuse me for a second, famo. Alright. Did you hear that? That There's a dog barking off in the distance, but there was a boo book before that. That's a boo book owl. We're going to be doing some uh Yeah, that's right, Dave. Well, you know, on YouTube, I mean, I think Dr. Disrespect is the only real hardcore live streamer on YouTube with the gaming. And it's good that he's still going from strength to strength, mate. I mean, you know, when it comes to gaming and that sort of stuff, he is the man. Do you know what I mean? I 
Oh, head case, I'm a fair way from the mouth. We're probably about, oh, I don't know how far upstream we are. We are a fair way upstream, though. Just waiting for these dolphins to come past, so... I hope you're okay during this lockdown and everything, head case. That's really good. Still got plenty of life left in the batteries. Oh, let's just chill out, fam, and just appreciate what we have, you know. Be nice to get a fish, you know what I mean? We've got, um, we've got a 48 centimetre brim from this spot before. So I like coming back here. You know what I mean? And, uh... Yeah, seriously, people, after I lost that big fish that time, whatever it was, we're going to keep coming back here until we get the bloody thing, you know? Okay, so, guess what, fam? The tide's changed. I can tell that because all the water's starting to come back this way now. Right, so, the lines are going to start to move. And hopefully we start getting a bit of action, famo. But what happened was before, the water was still. And I can see on the top of the water. I'll bring the camera down and show you. Right? So you can see for yourself. Right? Now, see how all that stuff on the surface of the water there? See how it's moving from right to left? Right, that means that the tide has turned. We've had the low tide, at the peak of the low tide, and now we've got the high tide coming in. So there's going to be more salt water wa uh, being pushed upstream, and with that salt water being pushed upstream, the fish will follow. Okay, so um, hopefully, but the only main problem that means that the high tide is going to be a bit lot later on. But that's all right. We'll just stick around and see what we can get, eh? And I mean, it's a beautiful day. Look at it. Look at this beautiful river. You know what I'm saying? Nice and serene and, you know. We've got our two lines out there just waiting for a bite. And that's the thing with bait fishing, fam. It's all about patience. All right? Nothing beats fresh bait. But when you don't have fresh bait, you've got to go with what you've got. <sighs> dun, 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 dun. There we go. Nice. Oh, head case, that's great, mate. You know, look, people, I just appreciate the fact that people give up their time to come in and watch, you know. Um, a lot of the hate mail that I had when I left the old platform, which I still find hilarious. Just to give you an update on how things are going, we've uh, hit 1,460 subscribers. And we're nearly at a thousand watched hours. We've only got three thousand hours left. So look, you know, if you um, want to do the stream a favour and leave our playlist on autoplay, that means that we will get partnered quicker, and then that's when things will start happening again. You know, all right. But yeah, like I said, thank you very much for giving up your time to uh, come in for everyone that's in lockdown. You know, we're thinking of you. Can't do anything about it, but. You know, we actually had a couple of um, truck drivers that came through New from New South Wales overnight through Norseman and Southern Cross and ended up in Kewdale in Perth that had COVID. Apparently they haven't contacted many people, so hopefully they can get on top of it, you know, and we don't have another big lockdown, if you know what I mean. Okay, so. Uh. Hey, Manzi, how are you, bud? Oh, thanks, James. That helps, mate, you know. We're averaging about 10 to 15 hours a day of VODs that are watched. Um, a couple of, uh, well, a few members of our community uh, have requested a little bit of gaming. So I've started a Liverpool career mode, you know what I mean? So it's quite funny with um, gaming. we got the PS5. I've still got to do the PS5. Um, sorry, Manzi. I don't know what the story was there, mate. 
Huh? Why was Manzi timed out for that? No, oh, anyway, we'll sort it out. What is going on there? Oh, we'll figure it out. Sorry, Manzi. How are you, bud? And, um, yeah, so I've been doing this career mode, thinking that I'm something special on the PS5. And it's quite interesting because you watch a few of the other career modes and it's all hype and, you know, everything's perfect. Oh, we went through undefeated. What a load of rubbish. You never, ever go through a career mode undefeated on FIFA, fam. You will always lose at least one game. You know what I mean? I don't know, Mancy. I don't know why you were timed out for them, mate. I need to go and sort out Streamlabs again. You know? So... It all helps, famo. And seriously, when we do get partnered and they start playing ads on the channel, just watch the ads for us because that way, you know, YouTube makes the money off advertising and you don't have to reach into your own pocket, you know? Oh, all right, man, see, no dramas. Yeah, it was only for one second, mate. All right, this tide is coming in, fam. This time of year, too, we have a lot of the red gum flowering. So those white flowers that you saw floating down, what happens is the Australian native birds will sit on the tree a bit like Karate Kid. They'll sit there on one foot, right? And they'll reach out with the other foot and they'll, like, chew the back off a honky nut. And then they'll hold the honky nut in their... Um, like foot, and then they'll chew the back of the honky nut out to get all the sap and all that sort of stuff out of it. So that's why all the um, flowers you see are floating down the river. All right, brim on. I think that's a brim on, fam. Yes, come on. Oh, you bugger. Oh, you bugger. That moved that bait. Oh, yep. Bugger. Righto fam, hang on, I've got to get this out again. That bait moved. Actually, that's the wrong spot. When you've got the water flowing this way and the line heads downstream, you know that the fish has picked it up and swum off with it. I thought it had dropped it and turned to take the bait. Well, at least we know there's fish here, fam. Let's do that again. And because we've got the um, because we've got the tide coming in, right? What we need to do is we need to cast slightly downstream so that the bait can come upstream. That's better. Much better cast. That's the one. Remember Cletus from um, Dukes of Hazard? C-O-B. Cash on Bowhead. Great. So we've just shifted the bait slightly downstream because we've got the water flowing upstream, okay? Oh, hello. There was a big swirl across the river there, fam, and it wasn't a bird. That was a fish. There was a huge swirl. I don't think it was a mullet, because usually if it's a mullet, you have quite a few of them in the one area. So that could have been uh, brim fishing just under the surface, but that's where our bait just was when I saw it move. So we could be on shortly. Hopefully I haven't scared the fish off from feeding by shifting the bait on it, but we're ready. We've got the right gear, we've got the qualia reels, we've got 20 pound fire line on that one, we've got 30 pound fire line on that one, and we're just waiting, come on. 
want to see the first fish of the season. But you've got to remember this time of year too, a lot of the fish are really large females in sporting mode with the big bellies. If you hook them straight out of the water, hook out straight back in the water. Because if you stress them out too much, they'll drop the eggs, you know. Eric Van Yarsfeld, how are you, mate? Hey, Rock, how are you, bud? I can't give you a shout out, mate. How's life treating you? Hey? Oh, I drank the whole carton, Will. Yeah. I've always done a lot of physical work, Will, so I'm an like, ex power lifter, and I did a lot of boxing when I was younger. I'm just starting to get back into it again. So, with the power lifting, mate, you just lift heavy weights. You don't try and look pretty, you know? So, hence, I've got the physique of a well tuned barrel so eric how are you bud hope life's treating you well hey eric what's going on with the lockdown in nz mate did you have another lockdown again or what that's the way mate see ya jp earthling hope you catch the halibut of a lifetime tomorrow bud Two weeks, wow. Was, Will, was. When I was younger, I was the Incredible Hulk. Now that I'm older, I'm the Incredible Bulk. Remember that stream that we did? When I picked up, um, did that powerlifting? Hadn't picked up the weights in 25 years and still deadlifted 500 pounds. That was hilarious. And held it for about 20 seconds. Right. Righto, fish, come on, get your act together. You're starting to make me look like a no talent. I can do that on my own, thanks. I don't need your help. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to, James, for anyone. You know the, do you know what the really annoying thing from the old platform is? I haven't been on it for three months, and I've still got people that are trying to get clout from me when I'm not there. I still get messages from people saying, hey, Jimbo, check this out, you know? And you go there and have a look, and it's like, really? Just get your own content and, you know, stop making other people look bad, a la me, to make yourself look good, you know? You just got to laugh at it. Fuck, not haven't even been on the platform for three months, you know. I just still laugh at it. And there's still a lot of good people out there, you know. <sighs> oh. Let's face it, people. One of the few things you have in life that's that uh, you know tangible asset is your sense of humour and I mean someone with a good sense of humour that's a good sign of intelligence as well and through all the COVID and everything that's going on you've got to be able to laugh at yourself you know and the situation that you're in because if you don't it just uh, it just makes life terrible you know I mean pre-COVID I never knew what cabin fever was like. You hear all these stories about cabin fever when people are snowed in in the winter with the harsh conditions, you know? And you think, jeepers, how the hell did they survive that? You know what I mean? Like, how did they survive that? You know? Excuse me. Oh, it's a honky nut landing on the ute. And thank you, people. How many have we got in chat at the moment? Let's have a look. Okay, 16 people. Thank you very, very much, famo. It's really good of you. And if there's any streamers out there, <laughs> 
Oh, very, mate. <laughs> very hot, James. Just watch it, Will. You don't have to do anything, mate. Don't donate or anything like that. Okay, just watch the stream, Will, and watch the VODs. That's how you help, mate, okay? So uh, that's it. You don't need to spend any of your hard-earned money with COVID and that, mate. Just keep it on yourself. Running Aces, how are you, bud? All you, all you need to do is just watch the content, Will. Like I was saying, you know, if you want to put the um, stream list on, you know, play so it goes through, that's how you help. Because what that does is that um, accrues our time. So, yeah, just keep your money in your pocket, Will, and just watch the stream. And we'll worry about that sort of rubbish later when we get partnered, mate. Okay? So, you know... The content at the moment is, yeah, it's, it's okay. I mean, I can't get out on the beach. So we've been here the last five streams. And um, like I said, mate, all, all we need to do is just, we just need to tick over to 4,000 hours, fam. Once we tick over to 4,000 hours, we've satisfied everything else. Then, whoop, we are going to be partnered on uh, YouTube. And I mean, you know, that... Being partnered on one platform is one thing. Being partnered on two, once we get partnered on YouTube, we're going to concentrate on getting partnered on Facebook, and then the sky's the limit, Fermo. Okay? But uh, we have got a lot of fishing content coming up as soon as the weather breaks. I've just got to get the rocker cover gasket done on the car. I've just got all the injectors and the glow plugs done. I'll tell you what, with the diesels, glow plugs are a bit scary. If you've got a glow plug that's seized in your head and you can't get it out, you're stuffed, you know? You're welcome, Will. Yeah, it's all greatly appreciated, mate. The most important thing about the channel at the moment is watch time, okay? Um, we've got over a thousand subs so we can start live streaming. Um, everything else is going okay. And then, like I said, we just need to tick over to 4,000 hours, people. Once we get to 4,000 hours, hopefully we get the letter from YouTube, and then away we go. Um, that's when you start getting promoted a lot more on the platform. And um, with the algorithm... We're going to get there eventually. It's not a question of if we're going to get partnered. It's a question of when, you know. We'll be right. Yeah. This YouTube channel is not about sending people on a guilt trip to get money out of them, Will. Right? This YouTube channel is about getting partnered at the moment. Once we get partnered, if people want to support, they're okay to do that, as long as they do it within their means, okay? And I tend to view that as a reward for effort, okay? I don't expect anything, okay? It doesn't faze me if someone does or doesn't. Look at that, they've got an illegal net in here. Might have to report that, fam. Just give me a second. Someone's got an illegal net in here. That's a sn Right, you cheat. And is life treating you well, Eric? Yep, I'll be ducking into fisheries on Monday and having a chat with them about that. Running Aces, how have you been, mate? Are you well? And the other thing is, too, people, the way you can help is just tell everyone about the stream again. You know, just let people know that we're on YouTube, we're live streaming on YouTube, and we're building. Okay, we're doing, you know, 13 to 20 now. 
later on when we start doing the beach fishing streams again it'll pick up and it's you know it'll happen oh come on fish excellent this new modem is so much better thanks running aces is life treating you well mate We should be back out on the beach within a couple of weeks, Famo. Um, since I left the other platform, I've invested a lot of time and a lot of money into uh, technology. Apparently we have an antenna now that I, if I can get a tower within line of sight, even a little bit of it from 40 or 50 k's away, we should be able to pick up Wi-Fi. That opens up a heap of new opportunities, you know? So, mind you, there's one right there. Interesting. Oh, come on. Oh, come on, you know you want to. Oh, that's life, Mansi. We'll get another one eventually, mate. It's just a question of when, you know. So we just bide our time. Unfortunately, with uh, COVID, Mansi, there's a lot of issues with supply. Some people have been waiting for parts for boats for nearly five months, you know. And I mean, take for example uh, Mercedes. Due to the um, like the silicon shortage or whatever, they can't get um, chips to put in the cars or whatever. For the cars so there's a shortage of cars you know so the price of secondhand cars is going to go through the roof you know what i mean everything's going to be expensive after covid fam you wait and see everything is going to be really expensive after covid like massively expensive okay even the freight prices have gone through. hey james do what you like mate i appreciate the fact you're in here what's d-o-t-a d-o-t-a Yeah, what does DOTA stand for again, James? I vaguely recall. Oh, Warcraft, okay. Oh, okay. Right. Defense of the Ancients. Oh, right, okay. In the early days on the old platform, we had some World of Warcraft streamers that came in and um, they tried to take over the stream. And one thing I didn't realise, I didn't realise in the uh, live stuff that the uh, World of Warcraft community can be quite toxic. So I didn't realise that. Uh, I have no idea, Will. My thermometer's not working. Oh, it's just nice to be able to relax and chill out. Do you know what I mean? It's just going to be nice to relax and chill out, fam. Yes, it's starting to fill up again, Famo. 
At least the water's clear. That's the main thing. At least the water's clear, fam. All right, we've rehydrated. We never leave rubbish here. <laughs> 93 degrees, wow. 17 degrees Celsius, man, so that's about right. I mean, where we are, we're underneath the trees and that sort of stuff, okay? So we have a uh, little subclimate under the trees and that. Oh, every day's a nice day, Will, when you can get out and have a fish in your upright, mate. <coughs> Excuse me, that was a bit rude. <gasps> What's the old saying? When you burp, it's better to have an empty house than a bad tenant. <gasps> Amen to that. Excuse me. It's funny, we haven't seen any dolphins today. Be wondering what time they come up. So it must be an afternoon thing. Oh, 40 minutes. Yeah, great, Eric. Life's good, mate, you know? If you're walking and breathing and talking, Eric, life's great. You learn that after heart surgery. How about you, mate? Is everyone well at home, Eric? I hope everything's going good for you, mate. Need to go for a walk this afternoon. Start getting rid of a bit of the beef. Oh, that's exactly right, Eric. That's the hard bit, isn't it? So many people are affected financially from the COVID lockdown, mate. It's not funny anymore, you know? The hardships that a lot of families are facing are terrible. <sighs> Come on. No, nah, nothing, Eric. This time of year, everything's very hit and miss, mate. Because we're coming out of the um, winter weather pattern into spring, once the spring's hit, 
um, sorry, once spring hits and the barometer starts to sort of pick up a bit, you know, um, I think there's a bit of a low pressure system at the moment. And it's the same old story when you're fishing. If you're not catching fish, you've got a million excuses and you just go through them one at a time, you know. Some of the freshwater content that we'll be doing in the next couple of weeks is going to be really good, fam. Okay, so um, looking forward to that. The lines are moving in the opposite direction of the wind. Usually that means a fish, but you know. Come on. Hmm. Oh, okay. I'd like to go to NZ one day. Eric, it's one of the uh, last few frontiers, apparently, with the wilderness and that sort of stuff, you know? And, I mean, your freshwater fishing is equal to some of the best freshwater fishing in the world. So, you know, you've got to experience that once in a lifetime. Fish mouths are too cold. <laughs> yeah, they do shut down in the winter. I mean, um, it's like the redfin perch that we get here, Eric. In Europe, the rivers and the waterways like freeze over. So, you know, they've got a very slow growing season. Here, because we don't get that, they grow all year round. But in the winter, they shut down and their metabolism is so slow, they don't need to eat as often, you know? Do, 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 do. Come on. But next week, when we get um, the car sorted Tuesday, when this rain stops Wednesday and Thursday, we're heading down south for a couple of nights. All right. And we'll be um, doing some freshwater fishing. Hopefully, we can live stream to YouTube. If not, we'll just upload the VODs. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you very much for giving up your time to come in and watch, mate. Thank you very, very much. Really good to see you in here as always, Christopher. Yeah, we've got Marin here in Western Australia, Eric. So if you get a chance, uh, Google Marin, M-A-R-R-O-N. And um, they're not as big as the Eastern State Craze. And do you have large freshwater crayfish over there or are they fairly small do they grow big like the ones over on the east coast It's a slow old day, very slow old day. You need a few lobster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I actually don't like the saltwater uh, lobster in that, mate. I like the freshwater crayfish. Yeah. We get the, um, we get those masked lobsters down here, the herbivores, they're huge. 
their bodies are like that, you know, they can feed five, six people. But yes, people, um, it was really good of Will to ask what he could do to support the stream. Like I said, just watch, okay? The Maori name for there is... Now, is that Kura or Kura? Because in Macedonian, that means something else, Eric. I'll tell you later. <laughs> It's quite nice, apart from all the car noises, being out in nature, listening to all the birds, enjoying the scenery, a bit of fresh air. Okay. Let me just check the battery life on this now. Nice, good work. People, if there's anyone out there that's aspiring to be a streamer, if you're going to get yourself a battery pack nowadays, right, get one of the battery packs that has the C fitting on it, in and out. Okay, C fittings like this recharge four times quicker than USB uh, fittings, okay? So if there's a lot going on with your phone. Bobos men, how are you, mate? Keep that money for yourself, bud. Okay. Don't worry about that sort of stuff. Just watch the stream, mate. All right. What's going on over there? Hang on, fam. Okay, so there was a bit of activity here. Now there's a bit of activity there. I've cast the two baits across the river, hoping that there's a bit of activity on the baits. Ah, oh, Netsky, as they say. Well, hopefully we get a bit of a, you know. Whew. I'm just gonna sit. This is as Australian as it gets, fam. Sitting on the tailgate of your ute and waiting for a bite. Just chilling out, enjoying it, take the pressure off your legs. You know what I mean? Enjoy the scenery. I'll keep quiet so it doesn't spoil it for you. And I'll move out the way so the glare off the forehead doesn't blind you. Oh, let's just enjoy it. And this is what it's about, you know? That's why I use the hashtag pure content. It's just us. No alerts, no rubbish like that, you know. Sorry about that. Eric, I don't know why Streamlabs does that. I'm going to have to change that when I get home. I still can't figure it out. All right, it's a whole new world again with this. Very sorry, mate. Sorry about that, Eric. If we went down south to the Blackwood River, we would have caught and released about 50 brim by now, fam and been absolutely smoked by huge stingrays the whole lot to much healthier river waterway down there, you know?
Uh, we don't have the same tides that they have up north, Eric. The difference in tides here is about 50 centimetres, mate. Okay, at the um, like ocean and that. You know, your, your low tide, no, maybe even a metre in some spots. This time of year it's not as much, but, you know, low tide might be 0.3 of a metre, high tide 1.1 of a metre. It's about your maximum range, so... That's okay, Bob. Just keep it for yourself, matey. Thank you very, very much for the thought. But uh, we just want to get partnered first, mate, and then we'll sort of worry about it from there. So where are you in the world, Bob? Are you in America? Are you in Europe? Are you in Australia? Your username sounds like you're in Australia. Excellent. Are you on the east coast, Bob? Oh, look at this, fam. How cute's this? We've got a mother duck with about 12 ducklings behind her. Check this out. That is awesome. These are mountain ducks. Look at this. Look at this. How's that for cute? Take a photo. Hey, someone take a screenshot of that. Look at that, fam. There's mother duck, and she's got the 12 little ducklings behind you. Looks at the behind her. One, two, I can't count. Looks about like 10 or whatever. See that? How's that? That's nature, how it works. Just following in single file. That's awesome. Look at it. Now, I've got to make a couple of announcements about the streams too, fam. I've been working pretty hard over the last few days. So let's just check this out. They're just gonna come into view now, here we go. That's the Drake, and look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I swear she had more the other day, look at that. That's what it's about, famo. The old boy's in front leading the way, mum's looking after the kids. And hopefully the bull sharks don't take too many of the uh, siblings, you know. Look at that. That's awesome. <laughs> they were down in the inlet the other day in the salt water. And she had about a dozen chicks. She might have lost a few. <clears throat> That's nature, Dave. It's like the, um, it's like the uh, loggerhead sea turtles that we do on our weekly streams, famo. Um, one in a thousand survive of the egg. So they've successfully released 300 sea turtles back into the ocean in Exmouth uh, over the last 15 years. So that's equivalent to 300,000 eggs that have been laid. Unbelievable, isn't it? They're going right up to the fresh water. <laughs> it's not gonna be long until we start having the salmon, fam. Yeah. Dave, you're in America, are ya? So with the turkeys, is the turkey hunting as hard as they make it out? I mean, it can't be that hard hunting turkeys, can it? Surely. You know, I mean, half the time during the mating seasons, the turkeys, I mean, can't you catch them by hand? Can you catch them by hand or not? Oh, 
I, I don't doubt that they're smart, but I mean, during the mating season, do they get territorial? You know? What's that on the surface there? Yeah, typical, there's a couple of ravens trying to get the ducklings. Horrible critters. If you put out decoys, they'll attack them. Paper and varmints. <laughs> Every time I hear the word varmint, I remember Calamity Sam from the cartoons in the old days. Tarnation. <laughs> uh, oh, shit. Here comes another boat. Man, what is it with us? The freeway here. Seriously. Got all this wildlife built in around. Got people around the boats. I'm going to have to do some shorter range casts, I think. But that's the deep end of the river. Hang on a second, fam, I'll wait for him to pass. So that's all here. Yeah. That boat there with the setup, fam, probably worth about 20 grand with all the brim fishing gear on it. So what I'm going to have to do, fam, is I'm going to do a shorter range cast, right? We keep having to retrieve our baits and that when these boats come in. I was nearly going to say, hey, caught anything, mate? No, not really. Too many effing boats, but we're not allowed to swear, you know? Right. So we'll do a short range cast, fam. And that will stay out of the range of the boats, you know. Hang on. Alright, so we've got one there, we've got one there now. Excellent, we'll just keep it on the shallow side of the river and the boats can do what they like. Might have a corner of the uh, car now. That's a bit better. Well, that's good. We've got a nice loose line in there. Excellent. What we'll do is we'll give it another half hour, fam. If we don't get anything in the next half hour, we'll pack it up and call it a day. A lot of birds starting to nest now. So they're flying past with twigs and leaves and all sorts of stuff in their mouths, you know. That night over here in ends, we're grabbing by hand off the fence, really. Okay. 
Yeah, birds are an animal that always have a high attrition rate, famo. You know? And in Australia, if there's a fish that was born to die... All right, we're on, fam. We've got a fish on. Come on, son. Come on. That was a bite. Come on. That line moved. Then we had a hit. Come on. Fish? No. Oh, you cheeky bugger. What happened there? First hit of the day, fam. There we go. Look at that. Got absolutely smashed on the end and typical, it missed the hook. That's all right. We're going to go back out again now. So they might be sitting mid-water. That's interesting. I saw the line straighten, so there are fish in here. Not too far out, just mid-water's good. Nice. Oh, let's get this out of the tangles. Tangles, they call him. Remember Maxi Water? Walker, sorry, not water. Get out of there. Don't get in that snag. There you go. So we need a couple of mid-range casts. Excellent. Yeah, that line straightened, so I gave it a little bit of time and tried to set the hook. Rightio. One thing I've noticed too, Famo, with fishing, you'll find uh, brim at different depths, different time of the year. So in the summer months, you catch a lot of brim really close to the bank. In the winter months, they tend to be a bit deeper. That's why I'm always fishing the deeper water. But uh, as soon as we cast there, we had a hit. So, you know, and I can't really keep casting across the river because we've got these boats that are coming past, you know. Ah, it's life. You're not going to land every fish that you catch, Dave. You can only try. Hear the magpies, fam? Come on. A lot of your really big black brim further south in the rivers that doesn't have as much fishing pressure as this, as soon as you hook them, they just head straight for the snags, fam. If you're going along in the Blackwood River or any river and you see like a huge tree that's fallen over and you sort of judge where the fork of the tree is, Bet you any money there's a big brim just sitting there minding its own business in the current like that, you know? And you've virtually got a plonk uh, bait right on top of its head or a lure on top of its head to get it to hit it, you know? There's a bite. There's a bite, famo. We've had a bite. Come on. We've had a bite. Come on, son. Have another go. It's not a very big fish, whatever it is. Come on. Get our first fish of the season, fam. Whatever it is, it's interested. 
Okay, the line's starting to straighten a bit, fam. I don't think it's a very big fish. At all, in fact. Come on, straighten that line so I can set the hook. Brim are a very finicky fish. You know, you'll sit there and you'll have the rod there and you'll wait and wait and wait. And out of the nowhere, the rod will start getting dragged into the water. And other times, they'll just nibble at it. They'll pick it up, drop it, pick it up, drop it. You know, so... Come on. And your fishing line is a very valuable fishing aid. You look at your fishing line to know, I mean, if the fishing line's slack and then it straightens and your rod tip's vibrating like a guitar string, you know you've got a fish on, obviously, you know. So if you see your line move where it is in the water, you might have a fish, so... Come on. Fish on. We got one, fam. Excellent. And it's a good sized fish, too. Get out of there. Oh, it's a beauty, fellow. It's a beauty. First fish of the season. Get out of there, son. Come on. What a fish. Check this out, fam. Get out of there, son. No, don't get it, please. Come on. Typically gone straight into the snag, fam. Big fish. Get out of there, sunshine. Oh, no. Right, I'm just going to open up the spool and I'm going to let it swim away. Or did it get off? It was a good fish, fam. Did you hear the drag on the rig? Hang on. Let's use the other one. That was a big fish. into the other line it went. I couldn't turn it fair mate. Could not turn it. Big bit of a monster. <sighs> when they take drag off 20 pound braid, right? <laughs> you need some fish. It turns side on in the current. It was about yay and about yay high. It was a good fish, fam. Maybe we'll get it again on the next cast. Right. Bugger. Well, at least we know they're here. Come on. So that's what they'll do, right? Is they'll hit your bait. They'll head straight for the snags. And they'll brush up against the snags and they'll dislodge the hook, which is exactly what that did. Hey, hey, drink, Waster. How are you, mate? Oh no. <laughs> Drink Wasser, how are you, bud? Oh man. <sighs> I'm only using 14 pound tip at 2 fam. Now, we've just lost a big fish. At least we know where the fish are. So if there's one there, there's another one, right? This is a great way to damage a nice coat. So, we're using fluorocarbon. I'm, yeah, good, mate. I'm just going to, all right, we don't have any damage to the leader, right? Which is good. You can only really tell if you've got damage to your leader, okay, uh, when you run your fingers over it. Because as a rule of thumb, you can't really see by line of sight. So, man, that was a good brim. That was a really good brim. Bugger. But where there's one, there's more. So I'll show you what we're using for bait. What I'm doing is I'm trying to conserve bait, fam. Right, I'm just using the tail of the muley. Now when you bait the tail of the muley and when you bait most of your fish baits, what you try and do, okay, is see where you've got the darker part of the bait up the top and the shinier part down the bottom 
in the middle of that line is your lateral line. So what you do is you go over on the lateral line one side, and then you come out the other side like that, see? And you've got a perfectly concealed hook. So, let's get fish again. That was a good fish, fam. That was a really good fish. Right. Now, a lot of people say, oh, you fish so light. Some of the tournament brim fishermen, they'll fish with a 10 pound leader, right? So this is 14 pound, which is probably a bit heavy, but that's okay. I'm going to set the drag to lock, fam. Right, we're going to have to wrestle this one out of the snags. And I'll tell you what, if we're getting brim that big here, I mean, the thing was that high when it came up through the snags here, and it fought like a junkyard dog, seriously. So if we're getting them here, when we go down south, there'll be half metre brim swimming around. Look forward to that stream. That'll probably be Wednesday, Thursday, rightio. So, God, that was a good fish. I don't know whether you saw the bend in the rod or whether you heard the drag, but the drag was nearly on full, fam. Nearly on full. Bugger. How's life treating you through this uh, lockdown drink wasser? Are you good? Is everyone good at home, mate? Hopefully there's another one. This time of year, they usually team up into mating pairs, you know? That was a good fish. I hooked it out here. Okay, and it snags here, fam. I just managed to turn its head and it just dived into the snags like that and it just ran its cheeks up along the snag and dislodged the hook. They always get out of that with leverage, you know? Hopefully it's going to come back. And what I'm going to do is if, the, if it hits again, I'm just going to wind, click the bar, uh, bar arm over and hold onto it and just wind and just wrestle it in. No finesse, no nothing. Not let it go on a run the whole lot because you've just got to get them out of the snags, fam. Okay? You've got to set your hook straight away and bring them straight to the surface as quick as you can. And that one there, I couldn't even budge it, you know? Oh, that's my old faithful fishing rod. That's what I bring down early season. That one there is a bit like the old codger in the bush with a 22, you know? He can shoot the hair off a bee's ass with it, you know what I mean? Sibby, how are you, mate? Welcome to the stream. Just going to hang out near the fishing rod, Pam, because if we've got one there, we should have another. Yep, we're on. We're on, Famo. We're on. Come on. Take it. Take it. Come on. We're on. I think we're on. Yep. Go. Excellent. Watch this. I'm going to set the hook. Ready? Come on, matey. It's just dropped the bait. It's just taking it again. Yep, it's just dropped the bait. It's just taking it again. We should get it on this one. Bugger. Oh, yes, we have. Oh, get out of it. Famo, get out. There you go, fam. Told you they were here. Now, remember this time of year, the brim. No, that's bad. All right. So what we're going to do now is... Right, that's taken that hook fairly deep. Right, straight back in the water. Don't muck around with them, okay? See? 
I actually think that was two different fish. The first, it, it picked the bait up and swam with it, then dropped it. It picked that up and swam with it and dropped it. And then there was nothing. And then it picked it up and swam with it and dropped it again. So that was a different fish. The first one that I lost was bigger. Okay, the first one that I lost, I couldn't even like turn its head, you know? All right. Thanks, crew. And remember, brim are a very slow growing fish. You don't need to, if you keep any fish out of the water for longer than about 10 seconds, right? You're not doing it any favors. Catch it, show everyone, straight back in. Right, don't put it into a little bloody container so it starts to suffocate and that. Just get it back in the water as quickly as possible. And that thing, as soon as it hit the water, just swam off, you know? So this is interesting. This time of year, you know what? What we'll do, I'm gonna cast as close as I can to the other side of the river, right? And when I say as close as I can, I don't know whether you can see it there. There's a little cove in here. I'm going to just ping this bait as far as I can in there, okay? I want to get this as close to the trees as possible. Nice. Rightio. I just saw a big V on the surface there, fam. We've got some more fish in there. I'm going to have to be careful. Because as soon as we hear a boat, right, I'm going to have to bring that bait in. So, what I've done there is the fish took that hook quite deep. And I've just cut the line and thrown it back in the water. That's what you need to do, right? So, we know that there are fish around this snake. If you're going to catch fish, fam right you need structure and shade they go hand in hand like that because where you've got trees you've got all this shade and what i'm doing is i'm just casting to the edge of the shade over there i'm not casting into the sunlight and what i've there done there is where i've cast is i've cast to the shade on the other side of the river so i'm confident now this time of year too because it's the winter and that that fish was in good condition it had razor sharp fins, as you can see, right? So, excellent. Let me just grab another hook. Now, I don't use, um, I don't use stainless steel hooks. I use the old style hooks and I don't use the chemically sharpened. If you do catch a fish and it does swallow the hook, right, what'll happen is this will rust out in no time at all, okay? So. Seven wraps around the line, back through the eye, underneath the turns, out through the loop. And thanks, crew, we did that together, all right? Because without you watching, there is no stream and there is no community, okay? Okay, so they're in a bit closer. Great. What I'm going to do... Oh, really? Okay. Oh. I didn't see it, drink wasser. Sorry, man. No, nah, not me, mate. Rightio, let's get another one, Famo. <sighs> now, 
Now, Famo, as I said, right, don't make the mistake of using too heavy a leader for brim. That's been hit as soon as we've hit the water. There's something that's already taken that, I think. Oh, come on. Do it. Yeah, don't make the mistake of using too heavy a litre for brim. I mean, whether you're using 30 pound or 15 pound, if it goes in the snags, it's still stuffed. I'm using 14 pound fluorocarbon, and that is plenty to hook fish. There's another V. So we have got some fish hanging around in here, fam. Good work. All right, so the line is moving from left to right, fam. We've got the current coming in. So for the line to move left to right, there is a fish looking at that. So resist the temptation, right, to lift the bait and move it because you know that the bait is presented well enough for the fish to hit it. Okay? So something picked that up and dropped it straight away. Come on, it's moving. Hang on. Always pay attention to your fishing line, fam. Your fishing line is a very valuable tool when you're fishing. Okay, it joins you and your fish. It indicates to you when the um, fish has taken your bait or whatever. In this situation, we knew that the fish had taken the bait before the rod tip started belting around, okay? So, I mean, sometimes a fish will take a bait and just go with it, but not all the time, you know? Come on, bud. Okay, so we cast out here, right? And now the line's here. And then as soon as it's felt the sinker, it's dropped it. All right? You know when you've hooked a really big brim, when the rod tip just buckles over, you set the hook and the line's going like a guitar string. It's actually vibrating, you know, like brrrr. Okay, it doesn't happen that often with braid. But when it does, you certainly know about it, you know? On Twitter. Nah, not me, mate. Oh, hang on. I might not have read the message after you sent it. Hang on. <laughs> Righto. Yeah, I didn't know that you... I See, yeah, you're still getting paid. Got it. Thank you very much for the retweet too, mate. No, not too busy at all, mate. You know? Not too busy at all, buddy. Rightio. Now. What I'm going to do, right, is that line's moved. I'm just going to give it half a turn on the reel. Okay, I haven't affected the position of the bait. I'm going to put that back down, okay? What I've done there is the line was sort of heading towards the snags. So I've just taken a little bit of the loop out of the line, put a little bit more tension on it. We'll just wait for our next bite, okay? 
come on. That first fish was really big, fam. Pooh, big fish. And look, people, thank you very, very much. We've got 20 people in here watching now. If you're new to the stream, welcome. My name's Jim. This is Australis TV. Please don't forget to subscribe and turn your notifications on. We've got over 125 videos now on YouTube. And if you're looking for a channel that's mainly fishing-based content, okay, pretty laid back without too much hype, well, you know, this is the stream for you, fam. So, uh, welcome. And, uh, you know, it's free to watch the stream. It's free to subscribe on YouTube, which is good. Okay, hang on, hang on, come on. Right. I'm going to start using soft plastics for brim a little bit later when the rivers clear up again, okay? So at the moment it's just bait because they're quite murky. Probably still got another hour left on the battery, so we'll keep going, fam. We've got to fish, so, you know. And look, thank you very, very much to the 17 people that are in here watching, okay? Thank you very, very much, people, for tuning in. Um, now, people, on the third week of September, we've... Oh, we're on! We're on! We're on! What a fish! Oh, get out! Oh, did you see that hit? Did you see that? And that was a huge hit, fam! That was an absolutely huge hit. Rightio. Oh. <laughs> hey, Vin, we got a decent brim, mate, and we just dropped another one. I'm going to sit here, fam. Right, so we have got some fish hanging around this snag. Okay, what we're going to do now... Right, is we mean business. So I'm going to cast this out. That's one of the times <laughs> that, you know, the fish hit straight away. So this is what we're going to do. Right, that seems to be the sweet spot at the snag there, just on the edge of the shade. I'm going to bring that back into the shade. And what we're going to do here is I'm actually going to hold on to the rod right like a statue when you're holding your fishing rod fam always hold it horizontal especially when using braid right because when you use braid you have zero stretch in your braid the only stretch that you have is in your leader right or oh, it's on i'll oh, go on do it so um what you do is if you start with your rod here and then you set your hook okay and then you drop your rod tip the fish will get off the hook okay but if you hold it horizontal and as soon as the fish hits you strike like that and hold it there straight away you're maintaining that pressure on the fish and using the leverage of your fishing rod to um, fight the fish now that was a really good hit okay and I mean, sometimes brim will hit your bait, they'll swim straight towards you. Especially the big ones, like you'll hook it, and you go, oh, I've got nothing on there. And then you wind it in, wind it in, and out of nowhere it tries to rip it out from under your feet, you know. I've lost count of how many times I've nearly lost fishing rods fishing for brim early season in the winter, fam. Alright, come on, let's get another one. I 
I honestly don't know whether I'll be able to hold this fish if I hook it. We've got 14 pound fluorocarbon, which is equivalent to six kilo. It's pre-hardened, pre-straightened. So let's hope that we can do the job, famo. But the only thing is, all of your big brim hang out in snags, right? Which is where we are. This is snag city here, right? And um, if we do hook it, it's either going to head straight in there or going to head straight in here. And I mean, these things are like bloody pillars, you know? Rightio. So what I'm doing here is I'm just keeping the rod horizontal. We're just going to wait for the bite. Hang on. We've just seen it. Okay. Okay, fam. We should be on in a second. Something has just picked up the bait, swam with it, and dropped it. All right. So patience. Don't panic. Don't start waving your arms around like you're doing an aerobics workout back in the 80s. Okay, so I'm pointing. All right, it's going to go down in a second, famo. It's going to go down in a second. It's just picked it up. So where my line is in the water, right, it's gone about 30 centimetres. So, all right, I think we're going to be on in a second. Hang on. So what happened was... My line was here, and then it got pulled to there, and then the bait got dropped. So what it did is it must have picked up the bait, swum with it, felt the bump from the sinker, and just dropped it. All right? Patience is the key. Don't lift your rod tip. Don't do anything like that. Come on. And what I've done is I've actually got my drag locked up, which is how they tell you not to fish. Okay, so there's something going on here. I don't know what's happening. I don't know how many fish are looking at the bait, but the bait's getting picked up. So I've got my line going out with the wind, and then it straightens up against the wind. That usually means it's a fish, right? Come on. Notice how I'm just sitting here like a statue? Don't move your bait, whatever you do. Just leave it in the exact position that you cast it in and wait for the fish to do all the work. I'm actually surprised that we didn't hook the fish then. That's why I use that system between two swivels. Come on, mate. And I bet you any money, if I put the rod down, or I need to go to the toilet or whatever, the fish will hit it. See how I have it? All right, hang on. The line's starting to straighten, I think. Yep. So now what's happened is I've got the wind blowing this way, but the lines come in straightened up this way. I think there's something putting tension on the end of the line there. So we're just going to wait. Steady, steady. Just wait, fair mate. Come on. Patience, fam. Avoid moving your bait at any cost. Righto, hang on. Something's picking it up. Come on, sunshine. Go with it. Come on. Very finicky fish, very flighty fish. Come on. Sometimes I think they know when you're holding the rod waiting for that strike, you know. Come on. Oh, come on. That was such a good hit before, fam. I'm shocked that it didn't hook up.
We're getting more hookups than Tinder today than some people, you know? I'm going to put that down because I feel bad ignoring chat. That was roughly the same amount of time as the last time. You watch, I'll walk over there and I bet you that goes off. Don't. <laughs> Thanks, James. Uh, I don't know, Vin, but I know it's very frustrating when you've got something with a brain that's smaller than the size of your little fingernail and it outsmarts you every time, you know? So... Yeah, I've lost count of how many times I've gone out fishing, waited, 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 you know, an hour sometimes, plonked it down, oh, I need to go to the toilet, turned around, and the moment you go into the toilet, the rod just buckles over, you know what I mean? The, the, the butt of the rod comes up and hits the other branch that's holding it there, and it's just on for young and old, you know? That was a really good hit, that third one. Yeah, I'm a bit of a river rat fam. I love fishing the rivers. You know, fresh water, estuary. Um, until I got a boat, you sort of um, learn to figure out where the fish are. You know, and once you get a boat and that sort of stuff, then it's a totally different story, you know. Come on. Ooh, come on. So what we've done is we've cast right over to the other side. I've got the big bait in the um, shade over that side and I've got the little one just in the edge of the shade over here. So maybe there was only three fish there, fam, but still, you know, that's good. Oh, that's exactly right, James, you know, and you'll sit there all day have 999 casts and switch off, and on the thousandth cast, one will just come out and hit it, and you're not ready for it because you've zoned out, you know? Hate it. I want to take us to a spot that I fished down south, Fab. Um, I've lost a fish there that would be easiest state record. And it's in a certain part of the river where it's got a rock wall and gravel leading into a pool. And you just fish on the angle at a certain angle off the shore and you just always hook these big fish. But you have no chance landing them because they just drag you across the rocks and everything, mate. You know? But with the technology now that we have with fluorocarbon and, you know, pre-hardened leaders and all that sort of stuff, I'm hoping that we can sort of change that, you know, I'd see talking about it, the old hands are getting itchy, or, eee, you know what I mean? <whistles> I'm surprised we haven't caught any small mulloway in here, fam, you know? Once again, people, thank you very, very much for tuning in. How are we going for battery life on the microphones? Wow, I, I swear we don't use as much battery life on the microphones too as the old platform, you know? I haven't charged those for a couple of days now. I mean, the other thing is too, Famo, if you're using a big bait and you're using a little bait next to it, you know, the big bait will bring fish in as well. And I mean, we've hooked some very big brim here on the six O's, 
we've had a couple of monsters on here, you know. What the hell was that? I knew that there were fish around here today when we turned up fam. I saw a lot of surface activity. You know, a lot of people seem to think that brim only ever fish and feed deep they don't they're surface feeders as well you know so um and uh black brim are a really good uh fish to catch on freshwater fly um usually use bronze colors and greens and that sort of stuff you know oh about 20 kilometers vin <laughs> well, that's how they survive, James. They don't become big fish by not being smart, you know. Uh, James, do you mainly catch flathead where you are? Because we get nowhere near the amount of flathead in Western Australia that you lot get in the eastern states, you know. So... Must have been only three fish here, fam. That last one was a big fish, famo. For the rod to get hit like that and it stays. But that's all right. That's fishing. Wow, that's charged beautifully. Mm, that sea charger is so much quicker, isn't it? It's one of the oldest sayings in fishing too, fam. Fish are where you find them, you know. So we've had a few quiet days here, but that's okay. We've managed to get one. That's our first fish of the season. I normally do the fishing season from spring to spring, you know. So, you know, August to August is our fishing season. So we've caught one fish and the... Oh, 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 we're on, we're on, we're on. Come on, come on. Do it. Now, that moved, it's like the fish picked up the bait and dropped it, so don't touch the rod, just leave it, let it do its thing. The other thing is too fam, when you set the hook, right, use the rod to set the hook. Never wind the reel before you set the hook with the rod, because what that does is it pulls the line out straight, okay? So if you cast in and you see the rod going off, right, Lift the rod and then wind. Don't wind, then lift. Because when you lift the rod, the rod tip makes the hook lift up vertically, which will lodge it into the roof of the fish's mouth. All right, we're on. We're on. Come on. Come on. That's it. Come on. We're on. We're going to be on in a second, fam. Come on. Do it. You know you want to. Okay, there's something looking at that bait right now. Yep. Hang on, fam. We're just about there. Come on, buddy. Once again, fishing rod horizontal. 
waiting for that bite. Now, when I lifted the rod then, I didn't lift it by pulling the rod tip back towards me and then lifting it over. What I did is I lifted the rod towards the line so I didn't put any tension on it because you don't know what's happening. Fishing's a bit like lotto fam, you know? I could have a fish of a lifetime on the end of that rod at the moment, you know, trying to hit the bait. And if I... <sighs> yep. There we go. Right, that was only a little one, fam. Cheeky bugger. So what it did, right, is it chomped the end of it. Uh, probably not. I'll tell you in a second, Vin. Right, so we're going to put this same bait out. Right. What I've done is I've actually just grabbed the spool of the reel there, right? What that does is that means if I grab the spool of the reel and I step back with it, that will track my rig straight. No, you're kidding. Was that a hit straight away? Couldn't have been, surely. Oh, it is. Now, in um, reference to lure colours, okay, Best thing to do when you go fishing, fam, is have a variety of different lure colours. Right, white, white with red head, black, blue, green, yellow, orange. So, for example, if you're fishing a really bright, sunny day, you'll find maybe, as a rule of thumb, that your more natural colours, you know, like your greens and your olives work very well in these waterways. Right? If you suddenly... Well, that fish has taken the bait and it's swimming towards us, fam. So that's a good sized fish, I think, right? If you suddenly get a cloud coming over the top of the spot that you're fishing, right? Change to darker colors like browns and blacks and that sort of stuff. So ideally, you always have a range of colors in your tackle box. Just work off the primary colors, right? It's been a long time since it was school, so I don't remember whether there's five or there's seven colours. But if you Google your primary colours, right, um, just keep a variety of your colours um, of the lures and that in your tackle box. And if one's working and then suddenly they go off the bite, you've had a change in light conditions, okay, try a different colour. Early morning, late afternoon, when the sun comes up over the trees, I'll swap to yellows and oranges and that sort of stuff. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Come on. Before that, I'll have olives, greens, browns and that sort of thing. And if we have a really dark overcast day or I'm fishing at night, I'll use a black lure or a black fly. And there is a saying that a lot of fly fishers have all over the world. The darker the night, the blacker the fly, you know? So it just seems to work. All right, patience is a virtue, fam. Come on. There is something having a look at that bait on there. We're just going to leave it to do its own thing. James, if you're going to fish, right, I mean freshwater, your first cast should be from here, 10 or 15 feet back from the bank, because the fish don't know what this is. You know, we, we, we try to, got to try and go away from the human perspective of thinking how things work with fishing. If I'm fishing freshwater, my, my first cast is from here. Right, I'll cast there. I'll cast in here. I always fish water before I either wade in it. So as a rule of thumb, right, I should be right not to spook fish probably for about six to eight foot from the bank. So fish six to eight foot from the bank. Then what you do, once you've fished it, so first cast down here, boom, fish that area there, fish this gap here, fish that gap there if you're using soft plastics. Then once you've done that, take a step, boom, 
You know what I mean? Cast and fish. I mean, when you're using baits, <coughs> you've got to try and cast and just wait. You know, hang on, hang on, something's going down. Yep, we're on. We're on, we're on, we're on. Come on, come on. We're on, do it. Come on, mate. They're a very cunning fish to fish for, especially in this time of year. Right. One of my biggest brim I've ever caught, the bite felt and sounded like this. Just a very light tap like that. That's all it was. Next thing I know, that thing's just buckled over. <sighs> nah, dropped it. Bugger. There you go, fam. You can tell that's... <laughs> now you can tell that's a brim. See how the tail's crushed? It missed everything, you know, it missed the point of the hook. So what I'm going to do is... Right. This is going to go out there. That's going to be like another lure. And what we're going to do... The reason why I'm not using other parts of the... Um, bait is um, I'm a firm believer big bait big fish like, although sometimes with you know when you fish for other species it's not really the same thing is it some of my biggest fish have been on small baits too right so what we're going to do is I'm going to conceal now see what I've done there I've had the hook go in one side and come out the same side okay Sometimes you fish with a lazy hook, which slides up and down the line, but I find that a bit scummy, so I don't do it. Rightio, family. So. And look, people, if you want to use good quality fishing reels at an affordable price, um, if you use Australis at checkout with Qualia, okay, you'll get 10% off the price on the website, okay? Right. I'm going to put a bit more tension on that this time. Right, I'm going to leave a little bit more tension on that. I've given them a heap of slack. A lot of the real old-time brim fish shows, they'll leave their bail arm open and they'll put a circle of line on the ground next to them and they wait till the full circle of line's gone before they'll set the hook. With braid, because it hooks up so quickly, um, we just like to hit as soon as we feel bites now. But I'm just gonna leave that. I've taken more tension out of that line. All right, great. So you always have a variety of lure colors when you fish, fam. You've, you've got to keep your options open. Even with fly fishing, it's the same. Um, there's a lot of flies that are called sunset flies. They have like a uh, black hackle at the front, and then they go orange, red, you know, uh, yellow, and that as they taper down. They're called sunset flies because when you've got that sun angling in the... Um, afternoons just at you know that level what will happen is um, it'll hit the water and this fly just tends to light up so the fish can see it right now hang on a little bit of line management here no that's not in the snag which is good just gonna wind up a bit more because the other thing is too don't leave your fishing line and your fishing rod until your line stop moving fam so you can sit there and think you'll know where the line goes. Oh, shit. But until you stop... Here comes the boat again. I 
Okay, famo. I'm going to hang out here, right? But we lost a bait over there. That's a really good sign. Okay, so that there are fish fish feeding on the other side. Some people spend a lot of money on fishing gear for brim fam. That's just if I am correct, those reels that were on those rods and those little lures and that sort of stuff is probably worth all of my equipment put together. Right, let's go again, fam. All right, let's leave that there. What I'm gonna do now, okay, is I'm actually gonna split this bait down the middle so the juices get released quicker. Right. And hopefully they've stayed downstream now. What this does is this will release all the uh, juices from the stomach and that sort of thing. Right, now. That will hold it together with the half hitch on the end. Right. That's the money cast, fam. That is the money cast. That is the money cast. Well done. And notice how as soon as the bait's in the water, I avoid touching it at all costs. That's because the longer you leave it in the water, the more natural it looks, okay? It might sound a bit silly, but it just seems to work, you know? Yeah, they do, James. Yeah, blood worms are a bit like that. Try and get the fresh ones, mate. I've got some spots down south that we're going to go and fish, fam, that uh, I'm going to show you. There's no reception down there, but they are awesome spots. There are a couple of spots where you get reception, so hopefully we can live stream from it, you know? Now, there's something feeding on the bait over there that's over the other side of the river, so we're just going to wait. And thanks very much for tuning in today, fam. Now that we've got everything stable with the Wi-Fi and all that sort of stuff, what we're gonna do is we are going to do longer streams now, four hours, five hours, six hours. Um, James, these are qualia reels, right? So with our qualia reels, the sponsorship package that we had organized with them is that anyone that goes to the Qualia website and uses Australis, A-U-S-T-R-A-L-I-S on the website, you get a 10% discount, and that's a genuine 10% discount. Brucey's already taken advantage of that. And um, 
that's the NLF 30, which is the no load fishing 30 reel. And that's the NLF 70 there, which is a no load fishing 70 reel. I've just got a WSB rod on the right hand side. And on the left hand side, I've got an old faithful. That's an old Silstar Traverse uh, Z rod. No, crystal tip. It's that old. That rod got built in 1990 something. Right? So. Yeah, it, it's 30 odd years old and I've lost count of how many fish that I've caught on it, fam. It was, uh, it was seven foot tall, then I snapped the tip off it. It went to about six foot four, then it went to about six foot two, and now I think it's about five foot 11 and a half. I just, you know, took it back and put another tip on it. But in freshwater fishing, I can cast a spinner to within that, which is what you need to do. Um, casting's a lot like golfing, fam, you know? Driving's for show, right? And putting's for dough, that's putting. You know what I mean? So, all right, so they've all quietened off. All the shades on this side of the river at the moment because the sun's sitting right there, so. Come on. The other thing is too, fam. Yeah, no worries, James. Just get through COVID first, mate, and then worry about that, you know? Okay. The transmitter is a little bit flat, so let's do this. Wow. Yeah, no problems whatsoever, James. Why isn't that working? Maybe I need the uh, C fitting. That's the res oh, hang on. I think I've pressed the wrong button here, fam. That's better, probably. Yep. Lids! <laughs> Lids, how are you, mate? What's going on, bud? Hey, Lids, your old boy held the state record for Jewfish at one stage, didn't he? That was a warpole, wasn't it? That's charging now. Welcome, Lids. How are you, bud? Yeah, I'm trying, mate. Just old, fat, bald, no teeth. Testosterone's dropping like everyone else at our age. South Australia, how is it over there, mate? I've got relatives in Virginia in South Australia. Apparently it's the marijuana growing capital of the universe. You still got hair? That's the way, Lids. Someone's got to do it, mate, because I don't. <laughs> What's the old saying? Grass doesn't grow on a busy street, you know? So, hope that you and your family are well, Lids, and I hope everyone's going good, mate. Oh dear. Whew. If you're wondering what was dropping on the car before, people, uh, that's honky nuts. That's like the seed pods for the red gum and everything here. Okay, and they just bite the back of them off and chew them, and then it puts dents in your car, like big, like, you know, blocks of hail. Well, wow, that charged to 90%. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. 
excuse me. Port Lincoln, home of the Greyhounds lids. Hey? Mate, if you want to get serious with whiting, you go to Port Lincoln, don't you? Or you have an Augusta in South Australia too, don't you? Some of those yellowfin whiting you get in SA, mate, sensational. And you also get really big, great whites too. Don't go wading in the water, you know? Hey, Lids, do you get those big dusky flatheads in SA or do they sort of stop on the Victorian South Australian border? What's the story there, mate? <laughs> sand flatties. Okay, mate. Nice one. Yeah, see, we don't get as many sand flathead over here. What's the time now? It's quarter past one. Okay. Interesting. We'll probably wind it up in the next 15, Fermo. Okay, thanks for tuning in. Neil, good to hear from you, mate. Do you hear from anyone from school anymore? Yeah, those whiting over there are huge, but you get, you get the proper pippies in South Australia, don't you? You get the nice big ones that you can actually hold on a hook. Oh, that's fantastic. This is using so much less download than the old platform too. Unbelievable. Okay, I think a brim's just hit that small bait, fam. Let's wait and see. That line just straightened up and then went, like, loose again, you know? Something's having a look at it. Oh, really? Thanks for the education, mate. Hey, Bailey, how are you? Yeah, that was part of the sponsorship agreement, Bailey. The boat went back in June, mate. So as soon as the insurance ran onto the boat, we, uh, it went back. So we've still got our sponsorship. The only issue at the moment, obviously, is um, supply with COVID and everything. But, you know, most of the world's going through that, mate. Cockles, that's right, cockles. Got to call them cockles. Hey, Zach, how are you, mate? Welcome to the stream. Yeah, so we're just fishing a river in Western Australia for brim, fam. So. Yeah, pretty quiet, mate. We've caught one brim and we've uh, lost a couple. But uh, it's uh, 
picking up a bit. I think the, the winter's just about over. Traditionally, the first week of um, September is when the spring starts, but that varies, you know. So we had a bit of a flurry for about a half hour there, but now it seems to have quietened off again, so we might move on, I think. Yeah, we've had a few, uh, Zach. We're just using uh, West Australian pilchards or muleys as we call them here for bait. So I've got one large split bait out there on the two six O's that are snelled and I've got a smaller one here. So, you know, steady, steady, mate. Just getting out and about and enjoying it, you know. We have hooked brim in the mouth on the six O suicides here before. And uh, the biggest brim that we've got out of here is 48 centimetres, fam. So there are a few around, but this river here, this is the Collie River in Western Australia. And um, there's a lot of pressure. Oh, hang on, hang on, fam, hang on, hang on. That big line just straightened and dropped again. So there might be a big brim on there. Go on, mate, you know you want to. We hooked a river mulloway or a river whaler here a while ago, fam, and got s smoked in the um, snags over there. So, you know, we've had some good results, we've had some bad results, but that's fishing, you can't pick it, can you? Oh, the hell was that? Vegan cannibal! Ah, uh, hello Billy, how are you mate? Sorry about that, Billy. <laughs> How are you, mate? Vinny, usually January, but depends on the, um, the summer, you know. Um, Perth has mid-40s in the Celsius a lot of times in the summer. You know, uh, back in the late 80s, we had 100... Uh, days over 100 degrees of Fahrenheit, so sorry about that, Billy. How are you, mate? The opposite to you guys. So, when you have your coldest month, that's our hottest month. But traditionally, January, December, sort of. And this season should be a very good freshwater season, fam. We've had one of our more traditional winters where we've actually had a lot of water so it's all good you know i don't know why they didn't charge it yeah i'm staying out of trouble bill and i hope that you're feeling good within yourself mate how you going in lockdown over there in vic you all right or Uh, uh, big flocks of so drink water. Oh. oh, that's right, Bill, you know. Is that another boat?
Hopefully North and the Pies have a better year next year, Bill. Certainly quietened off a bit firm, hasn't it? We had that bit of a change in the tide, things picked up and then, you know, now everything's coming back this way again. We might have had a little mini tide in here, you know? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm no, I said the pies and north. You finished a lot higher than North, mate. We finished wooden spooners this year. You know what I mean? Doesn't matter how old a Collingwood supporter is, Bill, whether they're this tall or adults, you say thanks for that grand final in 77. They all give you the bird and tell you where to go. Hilarious. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, dear. Excellent. Excellent, fam. Really happy with today's hit out on the stream. Okay. Everything's going really well. We've had stable connect connection. The battery life's good. Everything's good. Um, Vin, I think in the middle it's about 15 feet at low tide and it's anywhere up to 20 feet at high tide. So, yeah, it, about about five to seven metres, depending. Four to seven metres, it just depends. This time of year, there's not as much evaporation, and we've got a lot of water coming down from the high country, so it's pretty full, but in summer, it drops right down, you know. Yeah, good, Zach, yourself. And the other thing is, too, this is mainly fresh at the moment. Later on, the salt will push up when this recedes. So yeah, it's all good, mate. Oh, excellent. Stable at 30 frames per second. Kilobits per second is spot on. Excellent. Wonderful, this is great. Now we've got the test done, it's all good. Well fam, at least we broke the duck. Well I shouldn't say that because they swam past before. We got our first... Uh, got our... Um, first fish of the year, which is good. And uh, be good from here. Oh, it's a mixture, mate, but I think it's mainly fresh at the moment, you know? So. <laughs> it's always good to get that first fish of the season, you know? And once the hot weather comes back and the conditions get better, then we'll start getting more fish, you know what I mean? So, all right, let's just start bringing this in now. Oh. 
What the hell was that? All right, I'm just gonna chuck this bait near our other bait. Like that, that's a good bait placement, lovely. Yeah, brackish. Just your typical estuary water, Zach, you know? Right, I will put that back. What we'll do is we'll have one more cast. Uh, just one now, I had two. Um, I don't see the point in running you know, some people run six or seven fishing rods, Zach. I don't see the point of that. I have a hard enough time running two, mate, you know. Okay. So there are still fish out there. We lost a bait. Good. Let's have another cast. Yeah, I just always run two, mate. I'll always have a big rig out, and I'll just run one um, small rig, you know. All right, let's finish off with a fish, Famo. Why not? We'll put this right up the top of the bait so the fish hits it. Oh, mate, you know when you sort of go out there and you see like they've got six like rods on the boat all out? You're like, mate, you get one good fish and it's over, you know? So what I'm doing here is I've cast out and I've stepped back. This straightens my rig out. I'll have the ball sinker here and the bait behind it. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take most of the um, slack out of this now. Right. And just run a nice straight line. No bow in it. So if the fish hits the bait, it's going to hook up straight away. Now. Good. We'll just leave that there and away we go, fam. Yeah, that's right, Zach. Where are you in Australia or America or Europe in the world, Zach? Yeah, I just like to fish two rods, mate. At least with two rods, you hook up one, you wind the other one in, put it away, and away you go. It's just far US. Okay, mate. What do you fish for over there? Are you an East Coast saltwater fisherman? Are you a central, like, freshwater fisher? Are you a West Coast saltwater fisher? Come on. That's all. Uh. So this week we'll be travelling fam now. Got some announcements for the stream. East Coast. Oh, okay. Most, oh, like Upper East Coast. Is Maine on the coast over there? So, um, we've got a new stream starting once a month. Lake, oh, half your luck, mate. Those great lakes are awesome. Man, talk about a fishing aneurysm if you like freshwater. Um, we've got a new stream that's starting out once a month, fam. Okay. East Coast, okay. Um, we've got a new stream that's starting the third Monday of every month. You'll have to wait to the third Monday of every month. But we've been given exclusive access to a um, area when the public's not around. Okay, so that'll be happening between 10 and 2. Alrighty. Uh, further to that... We also have got a couple of other things in the pipeline. I'm waiting to uh, hear back from a uh, person that's a fairly big deal on social media, right? Uh, we're talking millions of uh, subscribers and followers. I'm not gonna say which platform they're from. And uh, hopefully we can get to know them because they're a fantastic person and a very interesting person, okay? And um, 
yeah, great people. And we're also going to be helping out with dolphin research. I'm very surprised that I haven't seen one come past here. We're going to help out with dolphin research and also other forms of research as well, but more about that later. So either way, we're just on the um, mission to find interesting content, which we've been doing. And uh, it's all going well, famo. We've got a heap of streams coming up. Um, Rotnest, a few other places. We're going to do an ocean kayak stream. Uh, I'm hoping that I can still get reception where I want to go with the kayak and then we'll just take it from there. Okay, so if you're new to the stream, please subscribe for free. Okay, and um, I'm not gonna let everyone know what it is on the stream because unfortunately you've got people out there that watch other people's streams just to take their ideas and uh, we're not falling for that trap. Okay, so we're going to, um, we're going to like inform people as we're doing it, right? And as we do it, um, that way you'll know that we've been doing it and um, we sort of came up with the concept. But uh, all in all, it's working out well and um, look forward to it, fam. That's why I use hashtag pure content because with the stream, it's us in amongst nature and, um, you know, What's happening here? All right, I think we had a bite then. No. Nah. Bugger. I saw it move. Right. Let's go again. All right, this will be the last cast we have, Famo. <laughs> That's right, Loey. Isn't it nice to watch a stream without, you know, sound alerts and all this? And there's no pressure here, fam. Um, I've got quite a lot of equipment now, Zach. Uh, when I left the old platform, I spent a lot of time researching. I've got some absolutely outstanding equipment now, mate, and if it all comes into fruition, we should be able to start getting um, reception in quite remote areas, which will take our content to another level. All the really good fishing spots, you don't get reception, okay? And, uh, I mean, this is how the stream's always going to be, you know. At the moment, people, we're just on a um, partner push with YouTube. We have over, well, I'm hoping we've got over... 1,460 uh, subscribers, and there's no pressure here, so, you know, the best way you can support the stream is just by watching. So, go through the playlist, watch all the videos, you know, and away we go. That's a really nice way of putting it, Lowy. Thanks for that. It's due to my eating habits. I don't fit into my car. Nah. Yeah, it's just been tough to get back in. As you get older, fam, it's tougher, you know? The hibernation feed. Oh, you're not wrong, mate. I've been hibernating for the first 50 years of my life then. Jeepers. So... Ah... Oh. <laughs> hey there mw how are you mate the other thing is too famo i've got some designs that i've worked on for apparel we've got a heap of apparel coming soon as well okay and um that will be available on the youtube channel hopefully by about september october obviously it's just a big outlay initially to get some stuff across but um yeah that's that's happening okay All right, come on.
Just excuse me for a second, fam. I'm just going to check something out over here. Hopefully we can get one last fish, Famo, you know? That is the plan. Still charging. And we have got one spot, Famo, that we should be able to get reception in the kayak. I'm just trying to design a little pod that can go behind the kayak that can hold all the streaming gear. But that's proving to be a bit of a mission within itself, you know. So uh, we will get one eventually. I just need to find the right one that's stable enough. And knowing my luck, a great white will try and eat it. But anyway, we'll worry about that later, yeah. Nah, the kayak will fit on the roof racks, mate. But, um, yeah, if all goes well, uh, with the brain's trust of the stream, we've figured a few things out. And <laughs> Yeah, fingers crossed, Famo. But uh, I've spent, um, yeah, quite a bit of, uh, well, invested quite a lot of money into the equipment. It's all about providing a stream that's quality, you know what I mean? And look, people, it's now 1.30 here in WA. I might sign off and shoot home for some lunch because, let's face it, I don't really need it, but, you know, eating's a habit. No, I'm kidding. So, um, look, stay safe and stay well. Be the best person you can be every day. I'll see you tonight. Hey, I've got a question. How would everybody... No problems. How would everybody feel about me restreaming an old Twitch stream? Like doing a live narration on it. I've got that Twitch stream saved on my computer where we did that big seven hour stream at night. Okay, so how would you feel about if we did that on YouTube just to show everyone? Would you be keen in watching that? I'll upload it to YouTube and do it as a premiere and then that way, um, you know, we can just work from there. All right. Well, we'll do that. That was that night stream that we did in the boat. I'll do it at a time that's more suited to the eastern states and of Australia and the eastern states of America. Thank you very, very much for giving up. Wee, that was a bit of a bite. Thank you very much for giving up your precious time to come in and watch. Stay safe, stay well, be the best person you can be every day when we come back. Okay, we will be doing more fishing content. And like I said, Tuesday, get the car fixed, famo. And then it's on, all right? Catch ya. Let's just finish off with a nice little river setting, hey? There we go, check that out. All right, fam, see you later. Thanks for coming in.